Elite Stalker. This time around, not going to get through it, even though it did lose in the last game. He's annoying. He's first banned for real. Playing against the heroes is like not really like playing Dota. It's awful. It's like playing against techies. No. Worse. Worse than playing against techies. Oh lord. Well, I don't mind playing against techies. That's fair enough. For most people, not worse, but. Nyx Assassin is the other one that we've seen sort of become a new uh, a new standout in the position four role. Uh, not that it's been like not always there, but the thing that we've been seeing more often now is him just sitting mid and then mana burning whoever is in the mid role, which is also just so frustrating to play against, I'm sure. Clockwork AA first phase from Empire, so completely different. They ban actually ban out the Kunka themselves, knowing that the Chinese teams do like that a little bit more, and yeah, I was rethinking about the draft from last game. They first overall took Kunka. They gave away Night Stalker, and clearly they were not that good with, not amazing with Night Stalker. There were a lot of deaths coming out from them, and they weren't actually able to get the jump in a lot of team fights because of like Link. Doppelganger, so they actually drafted very well around the around the Night Stalk. So you think that it was? I mean, obviously it was intentional for Team Empire to give it up, but they gave it to them knowing that they had a good plan in place to well, counter they, it. They know that Kunka is much better. That they play much better with Kunka than with Night Stalker, and that they also drafted against the Night Stalker. So normally, like, uh, let's say they play Night Stalker at 100, percent like, the, or sorry, they play Kunka at like 100. percent I think most of the Chinese teams this tournament do. Yeah, like IG Vitality LGD. Uh, LGD FY in particular. They play Kunka at 10 out of 10, and then if they played Night Stalker at like 8 out of 10, you prefer them having them. Okay, I get that. that that's probably where I would rate it at for them. Anyways, yeah, Nyx. Nyx is super annoying. Weaver, two invis in the first go. Yeah, IGV, not afraid to do it. I am curious if it's going to be dogfights that's playing the Nyx, and then as far as players for the Weaver, um, he, he did used to like to play sort of those sneaky invis heroes like a bounty hunter or a Ricky or things like that. I, maybe he could try and go for like that, but I, I have a feeling it's just going to be Paparazzi playing net. Yeah, Paparazzi Weaver. Usho. So other bands now, they're going to take away the In July Batrider uh, on Team Empire. As far as Clockwork AA goes as an opening, it's two heroes, you know, one of them good at pulling everybody together inside those cogs, and the other one good at killing all those people within the cogs. Uh, is there anything else here that we should be looking out for, like position four most likely from the clock? I would say so. He beats Nyx roaming around. Clockwork can solo kill Nick a lot of the time. Also could just cause a, pro a lot of problems. I think it's a... And also, Clock's pretty good versus Weaver, too, actually. Once he's getting the cogs, he has a time lapse. And just die. And then after it's already been baited, you can usually follow up with somebody else. I guess that is the problem that you run into with an ancient apparition as support rules. He doesn't have the greatest of lockdown. Uh, do you think we maybe could end up seeing something else? Like the puck would have been a great pick, but that's been banned out. I think clock's already is decent enough. Okay. He does. He serves multi-purpose. A good, a good buffer in between them, so they can protect the AA, very important fights, and they, he can also lock like lock down, I air quotes it. I think trapping him cogs is better. Trapping the weaver in the cogs yeah, is better than the weaver in the cogs. Because it's super long duration yeah. and he, you just can't do anything about it. And weaver's very rarely built pipe. It's all about like lance into defuse. Dezo is way more damage oriented. What was the nerf again? The the recipe costs more, and Lance continues oh, right. to get nerfed. Lance got nerfed like, pfft, I want to say like <laughs> three times in a row. Still so good, though. And I think the fact that it gets a ring of health is now. Is it so good? Yeah. Come on. Is it? it I, I swear to God, there have been so many games I've played where I love to play like OD, and you get a Lance, and you just go. Bah, well, bah, OD's, bah, bah, bah. OD's different. Yeah. OD, like, doesn't have the mobility in the team. But for a hero, like, like you actually have to kind of think about building Pike, whereas before it's like every range hero builds Pike. Every yeah. range hero lands. And wow, I think, God yeah. forbid, you have to think your item choice of Dota. I mean, we've played together. You know that this is not something that I do. <laughs> <laughs> the big one is matching, maxing Poison Touch on Dazzle, the greatest. That's fine. 
There's time and place. And time Just and place like Hurricane always. Pike in, on Weaver. And it's an A time, not every time <laughs> in place. <laughs> they ban out the PL as well, not wanting to run into that same issue with resolution. They didn't know how to handle it, man. I don't blame them for banning it out. He is just... Uh, it, to me, though, it felt like it was, in some ways, more just the play style that they were doing rather than... I think it was the, the, I he, think it was the hero. You think it was the hero? Okay. Yeah. I think uh, they could have... They know how to deal with... The thing is, they don't... That's not a hero that's picked very often. They probably play against AM a lot, or they expected AM. But PL's different. They, they also didn't pick hero... Like, they picked DK, I was kind of critical of it. It's was like, why would you pick DK when there's so many other heroes I can counter at? They could have picked, a, like, Timbersaw, I think. I don't know if it was banned as soon as they could have picked it, mm -hmm. but Timbersaw is very good. AM's also very, very good. I think there's a, a few ways to deal with the PL that other teams just know about. IG, Vitality, they were, they were probably under the gun. Rubik, ooh, first Weaver and Nyx. That's a couple really good ones. Impale obviously being a great spell to steal without that cast animation. The other thing here is that, you know, with the, they took a really long time choosing this. Uh, 22 seconds is all that's left in reserve time for Team Empire. So feeling like either A, this is a hero that's just there to make a little bit more time or something else. But the thing they I'm noticing... Put, they had to push Clockwork to three. Exactly, yeah. The clockwork in the three roll, which is okay. Not a big deal. I think Weaver is okay. Weaver's range isn't long enough perfectly. So here's another question. With AA and Rubik being taken, could they try an aggro try with a carry here? They've already got the chilling touch, uh, and then they have like relative they have really long attack range heroes. Depends on who the who the safe lane support is. I think it's looking pretty good. Oracle's not great, I would say, in that try on try against ancient apparition Rubik, but it also depends on the one position. So Weaver would have, Weaver Rubik AA is really strong. Like the Geminate on the Chilling Touch is really good, and also sometimes you're like you're worried about your like support just or sorry your good. And that's, I think there's some other one you can do it like Sven sometime. The Sven Clockwork. I yeah. I mean, maybe you can jump inside the cogs, but then all of a sudden they have four staffs, they jump out or something. It's just kind of awkward. Could be Luna. Five minutes would be. Three seconds left, and it is going to be an anti mage. A bit of a comeback. <sighs> Rezo anti mage. Yeah, that's true. Rezo anti mage, Rezo PL, Rezo Slark. Does this take away the possibility of it being a tri lane at this point, an aggro tri lane from Empire? Can you tri lane? It's not out of the question. Nyx is very bad in try on try situation. Oracle doesn't always feel like the best either. It kind of like Fortune's End can be okay at times, but I think it's much safer to just put him safe lane. Okay. And then this way AA can get levels. It's pretty hard to pull if you're in the off lane. Okay. I think you're okay with Weaver getting farm because if your AM gets farm, be about that. I think normally you want to aggro. Like I would. Maybe like IG Vitality should aggro if they want to keep the AM because an underform Weaver does more than an underform, and it's also ha harder for an AM farm at the early. Because Weaver, you know, he's he's not he's very unlikely, but I don't I don't think though I, I don't think either. Okay. Ooh, and a paparazzi most likely going to be playing the Invoker. For anybody that doesn't know this from the DAC times and previously as well, uh, when they play Invoker, it tends to be a lane switch between him and Sakata. So we might see him, unless they've... Sakata's been practicing Invoker a lot, which I'm not sure if that's the case or not. But do you like this pick? It tends to take a lot of time to come online. Uh, reverse Anti-Mage? Uh, not really. It's just slow. You don't want slow versus AM. AM is going to wreck you at 30 minutes. 25, 30 minutes. He's going to hit fast and he's going to hit really hard. And none of the heroes really deal well with him at all. Unless they pressure him. If they pressure him at the start with a, a, a with some really strong dual lane, then I could see it working out because then you can set up for sun strikes. But and maybe similar to PL like last game where there's no good counters for him on the opposite team and they're not going to stop him from farming at all. Wait and see. 
what it is that they're going to take as this last oh, pick. Oh, okay. For some reason, I thought Beast was a uh, Beast man. I was like, is that why they would pick Beast? <laughs> Safely in Clockwork, right? Mid Clockwork. Let's go. All right, Drow Ranger. You said pressure. You said oh, they push. Masked, they masked it with a drow. Nice. I actually like this a lot. I would. I. I considered the possibility when they first phase Weaver that they would they, that they would go for it, um, but then I didn't really think they would do it with the. But yeah, that's the way to do it. That's how you bait out an AM pick and then go for the push strat. It might still lose, but it's. All right. So then, as far as like lanes and everything else goes, a Viper taken is the last for Empire. I don't actually think Viper's that great for Viper. Drow strats. It has no wave clear, you can't counter push quickly, and you struggle a lot versus heavy physical damage. It's tough. Also, Nyx can just right click FN and corrosive and you get instant. Call. Mm. Or you can just cast anything on him and then you get you get just like massive amounts of stun. Viper vs Nyx is incredibly incredibly annoying. So a tough match is ahead is what you're telling me you're thinking you're going to see for Empire. What is that Rubik said? Darkana? It looks alien. <laughs> I don't know. It does look a little insane. That thing is nuts. Uh, is it going to... You said it's going to be a tough match for Empire? I think so. I think Drow Strats are... Uh, it's with Invoker. I guess... I mean, Invoker is not the type of hero that can end the game like... If he ends a game in 15, 20 minutes, it's because it's not because of the Invoker pick. Yeah, I will say it's usually because of the pick. So I think I, I, the thing is maybe they wouldn't have picked the anti mage if they didn't pick the Invoker. Well, it is what it, one thing we we're talking about, and it's what we're going to see is dogfights potentially playing the Weaver. Uh, and when he was playing back in the day, he liked to play a lot of these like sneaky run around, find courier pick off type of heroes. Uh, I'm really curious if he goes for like the swarm level one and tries to farm in the jungle uh, and maybe try and play it a little bit more greedy the way that Lil did, where you can build into a really quick Gaganim or if he tries to move around more and make stuff happen with a little bit of the damage increase he's going to start with. Do you have a preference of those? Uh, I think ending the game early versus AM is always... Keeping them down. I don't think Scepter is... I think, I mean, I guess if you push high ground, you have Scepter to block a, a lot of, like, Viper Strike and AA Blast. It's nice, but I would pr I would prefer, like, Medallion or AM. Once AM gets his, like, Battle Fury Manta, that's when you have a hard game. If you don't have most of the T2s done by then, I think... Look at dogfights. I knew it. This guy always does it. Places down the ward. He's just going to chill here and then try and snake that courier. lives for and it's also kind of cool because he's able to get down both of these wards before anybody shows up so blocking out the camp also having some vision here for mid to see where everybody's going to and being able to possibly put the pressure onto fn early would be quite helpful question is do empire have an inkling that this could be happening i don't think so uh, I don't know. Dogfights is pretty well known for that. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, he can kill it from either side, though. He, he's one. He's a super mobile hero, so he's not gonna have like if they skirt it around to the right side, he's not gonna have. So let's see. You mentioned the swap between Kata, July Nix, Sindarin absolutely despises. All All right. Does he have a reason in particular, or just you know? He said he hater? loses most matchups one on one, one on two, and most of the time you're just scouting at six. In which case, I do quote him near word for. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Oh, and here it comes. Courier moving out with the salve and dog fights. Hits it once. Hits it twice. A little bit of gold for everybody, and no salve for poor little FN. That's really bad, because you want your Viper to pressure your Invoker, but right now I think Dogfights can just go mid, right-click FN. He might actually die if he gets level 2. And... But, you know, 
than half HP with. Oh, it feels bad. Injali is pulling the creep wave past and trying to, you know, get a little bit of farm here for himself. Meanwhile, the clockwork off to the side was able to master on contest for the pull. He is going to be able to pull these creeps past, it looks like, as well. Didn't get the. Rubik, Roger, trying to pull himself a dogfight. Is this actually going to work out, though? He's instead going to come in mid and mess around a little bit. They pull back the Invoker, dealing some damage. They have a Sentry Ward down as well. Is Paparazzi already going to take enough damage to fall? Looks like he will be able to live through that. And with the Courier bringing out some Tangos, heal up ever so slowly. Dogfight's hanging around. Is he going to be able to get a two... Rune look be able to steal at least bounty on the left side. And this is the nice part about playing these heroes is you can, you know, start to move around and get Reposca. yourself those bounties. Oh, I thought he might be going. But he could actually go for a kill on mid. The wave is pushing in. And Poshka actually looks like he's a chicken instead. Oh wait. I mean he's doesn't have chilling touch for another eight seconds, but the creep wave is gonna be pushing under tower now and a little bit of damage being dealt. Paparazzi, no points in Wex, means that it's going to be tough, although FN tanking the tower. He's going to end up falling instead. First blood drawn by Paparazzi, turns to fight and takes another. Oh, damn. 11 HP showing off. Ooh, that creep wave was in the worst position possible. So close to the tower that you think he's actually going to tank it, so you get baited in. He got baited in by his creep right there. That was so sick. Oh, man. Whose creep side are you on? Away with what? He was at 8 HP? Yeah. It was low. <laughs> yep. And Hooker's supposed to have a bad start, but then you kill the chicken and then you get a double kill. There goes that. Hello, 7 minute Midas. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, it's, if he went for a stick, he's for his Viper. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure. He probably just bought items, like, he had the stat items and he just wanted to buy cheap items because he thought he was going to die. That's my line of reasoning. I mean, I, it's, it's good later on. Oh, well, actually, pushing it. Bottom lane there. They're able to find a kill on July and Resolution just going to solve up afterwards. Sinner wasn't wrong. <laughs> he knew what he was talking about. Nice there. Uh, Ghost Dick in the meantime has been able to get inside with Super and the Sun Strike to try and turn it. IGV keeping their buddies alive and Paparazzi on this Invoker, showing why he is well known for it as bottom lane. They've been able to find Maposhka yet again. So in July, showing up with a little bit of help from the support Weaver. Maybe Nyx Assassin is good if you have a support Weaver. Rezo. Spiked. Pale onto two. Dealing damage to Roger. He's in some more trouble. Dog fights making it all happen. 5-1 to one start, IG Vitality striking back in a big way, but dogfights might end up dying for it, so they do trade kills. That move. But Venom and the Anavar and Paparazzi getting dove yet again in the mid lane. He turns to fight. Ghost Dick is going to push him back, but can Paparazzi get out? Is he going to be able to salve up and live through it? Indeed he is. And instead, when they gank Paparazzi, they do not take into account that tower damage. Living again. That clockwork cog has pushed Paparazzi so far away from the Viper. <laughs> <laughs> and he still doesn't have any points in Wex. And, like, it's going to be the Shrine now as well, so he's going to be back up to almost full mana. He's been playing a fabulous Invoker, and this is the scary part. All this Drow Aura coming online and him having a decent beginning. How worrying is this for Empire? Oh, it was scary to crap. It's better than what coming up from that. Viper's getting destroyed. I, I still do not completely understand why they pick Viper, though. I'm not a Viper player myself. I do not think. The hero's good at, what, winning the lane, being super tanky, and kind of pushing with the mini. But Sakata gets a double push back. Out. Trying to run away. He's juking them out. Can he actually escape from this, though? Power Tread's trying to keep him alive and super here. Can they make the escape running? Trying to find it. And, well, with Dogfight showing up, they might just be able to do it. They're so close. He just wants a little touch and is going to be able to hit him. Finally. I do wonder if Drow maybe kept on running and would have lived, but probably not. Probably not. Clock was pretty good. Maybe 35 or 
it's so funny. So, yeah, that was right before he has six. Look how close he has to six. He'll get it now and help out the rest. But yeah, it's a little frustrating for sure. Um, the big problem we do see here, of course, is that Empire is still getting a lot of farm on their anti-mage. Yep. Yes. FN? Oh, able to dodge, able to juke. Can he jive, though? Taking the damage. Roger shows up, though, with Maposhka as well. They're trying to go after Paparazzi. The sentry ward is already down. So finally, that invoke where we brought down the mid lane. And then July also in some trouble. The Viper Strike finally wearing off, but they did get in range for the Batter Assault. So three die in the mid lane, because Empire brought four. That's why Viper's good. Go on him, get corrosive. Easy turn around. I don't know how. So many Empire heroes got there so quickly. But that's a huge, huge win. Much needed. Still I, wonder, I wonder if uh, Invoker's going to Man, he, I thought he was going to get like 7 minute Midas. No, I, I guess he had a <laughs> up for Aquila. So Aquila's a lot. Um, yeah, I wonder who's going to go. Yeah, I mean, is this a normal type of, like, draw strat where you want to really try and push the tempo? Because, yes. I mean, they do have, you know, a Weaver in the four roll that's been getting a decent amount. You don't think so still? That they still want to keep it up? AM, though. Yeah. I think AM crushes most of these heroes. Yep. One gust. Don't think yeah, my goal was like for two years. Uh... No. They have a lot of damage, though. Oh my, my god. god. Okay. <laughs> doesn't have any armor. It's time to pick up that chain mail, buddy. <laughs> to pick up something, that's for sure. The Tranquil is no longer given armor. Okay, see, Dogfight is going for the medallion. So sure. As soon as the towers start toppling. I saw there for a while, Roger was sitting mid to see if they could catch Paparazzi as he came back to lane, but isn't going to happen since he ended up heading back towards the jungle instead. And it looks like Roger Maposhka to find Super, but instead Super is going to be pulling, and now he sees these creeps are hitting the last vampire. Rockwork hooks in, connects onto the Weaver, and finally, Dogfights is going to be punished for all that movement. Just a Weaver, no good. Much rather kill the Drow Ranger. Six assassin just not really having a good time on bottom. Oh, wait, they're switching Drow Ranger up there. That should that should happen. As soon as, 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 as the dies on top. This is where things get. AM, he wants to get as far as he can before the push gets even more problematic than it already is. The nice part for Empire is they do have this Ancient Apparition available to try and spam out waves once he gets level 6 and throw it at the constantly pushing team from IG Vitality. Oh, I guess actually that tower's up. He's going to try and pull it past, but in July is here. The Impale juked again. Empire. Able to make the escape, and guess what? I see Vortex giving him a little bit of extra movement speed. Dogfights is going to be a little bit off the mark with the swarm, but still two might end up dying. Jukes and dives away from the sun strike, and the TP in from Ghost Stick. I'm going to have to back out. AGV, able to secure the kill. Uh oh. Good big TP in. They're slowing them down so much. That AA. Just save that tower and look, AM's actually going to get a tower response. Oh my god, I'm <laughs> We're making the plays happen. Ghostic actually pushes everybody out and is going to hook shot to dogfights. Might end up killing him as well. Dogfights, where are you going? Oh, 12 HP, he's going to live. And now Roger forces them back. There are four heroes here for IGV and they just can't push this tower. Yeah, they could have just right clicked. The tower, but they did that AA play though. It, it, it drugged them so far away. And Rubik as well. Like, they can't really wrap around with these heroes super effectively. Dogfights and Super, they're really scared to walk up high ground with good reason because Ghostick is starting to run them down now, but they're all going to be grouped up together. Can they kill them off in time? No, they're still going to be able to find a kill coming in and just barely keeping Super alive. It's a trade of the Ghost at Clock for Dogfights Weaver, and still this tower stands while Resolution is pushing top. He get the tower. Drow Aura. Oh, wow. yeah. Surprise. I mean, Viper was sparked there. Nice one, Papa. Still able to do it. So 11 minutes in, IGB with a pretty substantial lead in terms of gold, 3,000 because of the towers they've taken. 
what is the like item that you know resolution getting into is going to sort of make the difference with? Uh, man. Manta. Okay. Battlefield and Manta. Then you can start fighting well. If it's just Battlefield, you'll just get me. Shot in. It found Trow and pushed back the other two supports. Well done. Gus doesn't hit onto anybody, but it does look like Trow going to be brought low. Can't she get out? No is the answer. So they lose the Drow Ranger. Dogfight's forced to fight back, and now the AA Blast is going to connect onto Super. Well played by Maposhka. Sunstrike. Finding the kill? Not quite. Right, it's out. That Soul and Swarm 2 really hurt them. Woof. Ghostic threaded the needle there. I can't believe he actually found the Drought Ranger. It's crazy good. And that tower still to be. I still would say that Mposhko with that with those plays on the ball. Like has, has completely stopped in this game. It could easily be like a 7,000 net worth lead, I would say, for IT Vitality. You just kill the AA down there, take the tower immediately after, and then proceed in a roast. They could be doing roast right now. Well, this is a pretty good thing to be doing as well. Yep. That's nice. Killing them off. And the initiation came from Sakata with the three points up in Gust, actually. Much more emphasis on trying to put that silence out on them and make sure that you can't get any counter kills. Still waiting to see where it is that these heroes go next for IGV. Uh, it almost feels as if they're like missing out on timing, but I guess the other thing is that Paparazzi has been given a ton of space to farm for himself uh, and is going to have a force staff already online. Force. A little bit different. Clock. It's like driving just going for pike first. It's gonna slow down your timing though. Like, like having to go for a finish of Hurricane Pike instead of going for a Yasha, like slows down your entire team. I would have preferred actually go I think one for uh, and then rely on Roche to tank like a clockwork coach. You just accept it. I mean ideally you don't get hit. You have ways to deal with it, guys. It really does feel like they don't really care uh, that much about... I mean, I guess that they do care, but they're not, like, a huge emphasis placed on finishing off all the towers or going to the other ones. They're more focused on, like, getting into those items for paparazzi. Like, you, you know, Sakata actually ends up getting caught in the jungle, and he's going to be able to push one back, but Resolution is still on the chase. The A Blast coming in. They do manage to drop the heal, but I don't think they got it out in time. Ghostic, good amount of damage. Does Sakata heal up enough to live through this? Just barely. Man, that was close. That's pretty close. So there's that interesting dynamic as well with the uh, false promise and the ancient apparition ice blast. You can wait a second afterwards, then more often than not, you'll still get the, or you will always get the heal off of false promise. Yep, he, he was able to. But we see him. Still pretty good move from Empire that are able to put pressure on before ATP teams battle through. 15 minute battle fury. Definitely good timing for him. So. Yeah, man. He's having himself a good old time. Kata, plus five to all stats, trying to stay tanky. Almost at the pike for him. Empire, the ones making sure that FN has a good time too. They're just always about making sure he's happy. Oh, Ghostic found another one. Gust him away gonna heal some more <laughs> it's just like sort of being a pest constantly jumping in there and hitting them and then running away just there to buy time for Rezo and he's doing a good job of it Rezo is actually up on the cliff right now he's being scouted by in July are, are they actually gonna find this kill looking for it the impale oh it's off the mark oh don't worry nobody saw I'm sure not sure if that would that was a difficult sun strike to hit not hit it yeah. Resolution. The Battle Fury is there for him, so the farming can continue. IGB, the Tier 1 tower bottom still standing, and it doesn't feel like there's a concerted effort to make sure it gets taken down. It doesn't really feel like IGB are sort of more content farming. Do you think this is a mistake? Is this... It's, it's not really a mistake. They just don't really have good play now, now that they botched the T1 bottom. FN was just sitting there with the move behind. Andy has the 170 health, 175 health from level 10. So, 
Just look at the sport. Literally just sitting right behind Roger is. Wow, and instead it's Empire to one. Going as four towards mid. Viper is a very good four man here, right? Yeah. God, they've got so many creeps. Uh, bottom lane is going to be taken by Paparazzi, but in the meantime, all of this damage being dealt, they were able to find a kill, actually. Over to the side, they took that resolution. He ended up getting rooted there by the Ancients, and they're also going to take down the Oracle Empire Dew. In July, bursted him down, and then Oracle was able to... I th he purifying flames from the low ground, and I think he actually did need it. Okay. So don't, it, 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 he was out of his opinion. Dogfight is going to get found again. He's just skittering around here. We'll have another Sakuchi to try and make the escape. Dust ends up hitting. Now Rubik has stolen Sakuchi. Could chase here if they want to. They have the Icy Vortex to slow him down a little bit, but I do think the Dogfight gets out of this one. Rubik has Sakuchi. Best spell to steal. Actually, Impale's pretty good too. Sakuchi, I think, is number one. Sakuchi, number one. <laughs> <laughs> FN, it's just been left. He is Pike himself. Pike on Pike on Pike on Pike. We're by the Pike Place Market. They're buying Pikes. It's all happening. Isn't Pike like a type of fish too? Yeah. yeah. It's sort of like an can eel. eat it. Um, sure. You can eat Pikes. You can eat anything. You can eat Pikes with a Pike. Yeah. You can Pike it. Pike cat. Pike. <laughs> He's hurricane piking the forge spirit. I haven't seen that before, but want to make sure that he should move boss. They need to take Roche out soon. This is a slow drow lineup that they aren't able to take Roche 18 minutes. But AM's getting there, dude. Paparazzi is going to be found. The ice blast coming through. I do believe he is dead. A tornado up. Going to. Just lift him up in the air before he falls down himself. GV. It's susceptible. He, he lost 300 gold, but he had already completed. Is that what they've been waiting for this whole time? Like, uh, otherwise, it's just sort of a three spell invoker. Does this yeah, change things? Oh, Roger. Ooh. Oh, well played. The four staff's going to keep him alive for the moment. They wanted to get the Scoochie damage out with that. Catch, but is it going to be enough? They're still keeping him alive. Roger taking a lot of damage as well. Is not going to end up dying to those right clicks. He's able to disjoint them, and now they've caught the Oracle as well. All right, there are a lot of bugs on all these people. Sakata, Shadow Blade, and just wanting to not get found, but three are already dead. And well, Invoker back up shortly. Kamaposh could get out of here. He's taking a ton of damage, ends up falling to dogfights. And with Invoker coming back, it might be time finally for Empire to retreat. Barazzi's got him in the sights, though. The tornado goes out. Is it long enough range? It would have been, but wasn't right on the target. I will say Empire, they're they're playing the four with the very Anti-Mage, yeah, he's died a couple of times, but he's had incredible amounts of time. I guess if you're going to pick up a stand-in, this is the way to play it. Yeah, for sure. Man, and... You look at him, the resolution's just like get whatever he wants as well this whole game. Um, and I, I I don't really know, like if you're IGB, do you just have to ignore him at this point and just try and like go in, find a pick off secure Roche, or do you try and keep trying to pick off the anti mage? He is I think too fat now. They're gonna try and sneak Roche and they have the bug on him. They have the disarm as well coming from Super. And they are going to not get scouted. It looks like this one should be a freebie as In July will die, making space for the rest of his team. I think Invoker will probably be a better. I think they're going to have to rely on him a lot. So they weren't able to play this like a typical Drow Strat. Failed push on T1 bottom. They had the invoker in mid instead of like right clicker. Paired with uh, drawing are sometimes OD, but with invoker you can play stock completely changes because you have to wait until twenty. But on the other side you have AM who also needs to. 
generally, I would say, is a lot more explosive than the Rezo. Just about 600, 700 gold away from that man stun. Enjoy the fights. Fan avoid you. Win fights. I think they're farmed enough now. Or, or rather. Yeah. We do also have uh, the Midas that's been picked up for Nyx Assassin, so it is very much just aimed at that late game. Try and pine pickoffs where they can with Nyx, Vendetta, and then a Sunstrike from Paparazzi. Maybe a little bit of help from Dogfights. Actually, Empire all staying up on the high ground. They just want to find a pickoff onto that Weaver, as he is only 1,700 gold away from Aghanim Scepter. Plan B. 1500 HP right now on this anti-mage. They are moving in and they do now hit on that scan. Roger immediately gonna back off, but they have sights on resolution. Ah, it's a really hard pickoff though. Uh oh, he ended up getting revealed right away. He didn't get the vendetta damage out. It wouldn't have been enough anyways, but it will still escape Tornado. It's actually gonna clip him. They're able to find him for the moment, but can they follow it up with anything? No, looks like the answer. Not be anything, and now off to the side. It's going to be a lift back. They actually are able to pull that Drow Ranger down as you try to force Sap away. Might still be enough damage. Super being controlled and taken down by FN and Sakata trying to get his way out of there, but it's going to be the Aegis expiring. And now FN, Cold Snap, taking a lot of this damage. Resolution can't pop in to help out. So the five man from IGV ends up working out. Get the. How are they able to bring in everyone so quickly? In July, we just top. Yeah, I don't know. Well, super in the right place at the right time, just sitting there backing up his Drown Ranger. They, yeah, they did pop the Aegis, but here they go with the timing of the push. Manta Battle Fury. Doesn't look like this is going to be enough. Wow, and a media buyback from the Viper as soon as they get ready to push high ground. So IGV content with that for the moment. And Resolution forced to go back to the farming grind. I say forced, he's probably having a great time. Yeah, a lot of time as I am, that's great. It's a smile on your face, buddy. Does any teammate ever smile? I don't think so. <laughs> he usually has his mouth covered. He just talks shit about magic. Yeah. He doesn't even, he, he's just there, he's like the ultimate type of asshole. He doesn't even take any pleasure from it. He's just take, there to make other people miserable. Yeah. It's like you Naga like, Siren. You like playing Naga Siren, though. I do, like, but yeah, it makes that makes me happy. <laughs> I'm the other kind of asshole. The one that <laughs> takes pleasure from that. Good night. Is he going to be caught? Nope, and then it's stolen by Rubik now, trying to get out, and he is going to get a Spike Carapace. Stun on the two, but nothing really doing. The rest of IGV should back out. Uh, they spot Roger. Okay. Well, that's not good. He's dead. <laughs> Vendetta gone. <laughs> Core for support. Actually, Rubik's net worth is tired than the mix. Who's the real core? We've seen that other game the App Store was playing on it and just went completely insane with his farm levels as well. I'd say that they've been doing a pretty good job on Team Empire with the Rubik. Oh, there's a scepter! They got it done? Oh man, 16 second cooldown. Now Oracle. Breathe the sigh of relief. It's not the shoulders. No, that's someone else goes. Actually, what's actually going to happen is both of them are going to cast a spell on the same target. More stressed out. Yeah, that's uh, always a possibility. Um, requires a good amount of teamwork. I don't know if I've seen IGB play the Weaver in the support role all that often, but it's worked out really well for them, I would say. There's 7,000 net worth up, and now they're making this big smoke gank movement, and it looks like they will run into FN on the Viper. Uh -oh. Doesn't even have Hurricane Pike up. This is a super dead hero. Kill comes out, right clicks there, save the kill for the Sunstrike. Not really. Sakata is just going to take it. Fun. That's a. Oh, wait, yeah, he doesn't have buyback. Time to push high ground. 40 seconds, and the best thing they could do right now is just cogs to try and keep them back, but I don't even know if that's super possible. Uh, Rubik did steal Forge Spirit, which is quite good. And tornado trying to find somebody fishing, but didn't connect. 
Is Resolution going to get a courier kill? That's random. The slow Siege is going to continue with Alacrity Drow Ranger. Uh, the Ice Blast comes through, but the time lapse away and the solo up. They're going to both get caught in the cogs, though. What's the follow up here to be able to deal any amount of damage? They're starting to bring down the Clockwork, trying to kill him off. Paparazzi's there, a big mana void, enough to take down the Nyx, but nothing more. And Weaver also will have time lapse back up now if they want to use it to try and keep Sakata alive. Dogfights need to catch up. It's a little bit too late. And now he's also dusted. They have eyes on him. Can they catch up, though? There's the lift, there's the right clicks, and soon to be dogfights out of the fight because time lapse is a balanced spell. Oh god, what I said was going to happen happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh. I I wanted to have some faith that it, yeah, it happened. <laughs> So, Resolution now has built into a Manta style, has the butterfly completed, uh, but it hasn't felt like, you know, he obviously hasn't been in the fights. Does he start to join them now, or does he want to wait for, like, Abyssal? No, he can join them now. This D3's not, hasn't fallen yet, so he doesn't have to trace split, which was still defend, especially now that they still have shrines out. I think they just need more items on the Viper right now. He probably needs more armor. He went, did go for a Halberd. Evasion's nice, but I also think you need... A mix of armor and evasion. And HP. He already has the HP. He went from 15 strength on fi at 15. I think that's the right call here. He's just there to tank so that AM. AM does far more damage than he does. Right. Mage. He has 330 plus hits. Been hitting him quite good. Yeah, and uh, there's a couple nice things here, like Silver Edge for Drow and going back for the MKB next. Uh, but it does feel like they're going to need to you know, obviously win a team fight in a pretty convincing fashion before they're able to take high ground, since Ams can constantly push out the waves. It sucks for him because Silver Edge was good when he was thinking about getting it, and now it's not good. Because Viper, d he died, he fought back, and then he died again yeah. in a few minutes span of time. So now, like, main target of you want to deal with the anti mage but Silver Edge isn't actually that great for his anti mage it's the magic mage on the side of IG. Ooh. Paparazzi TPs into everybody and actually is just going to be able to walk out. They're able to dodge away from a couple of those spells. The stuns come out. Clockwork lifted up in the air. And all resolution trying to bring down Angel Eye. Can take him out if he wants to. The mana void comes, but Ghostic pushes back too with the cogs as well. Steals the meteor, throws it back at him. Able to force staff away. Both of these cores still staying alive for the moment. Paparazzi, is he going to be able to make an escape? He does have Cold Snap as well. He's going to use it on to Rezo to force him back again. So they only lose the Nyx Assassin, and well, also now, Ghost going to lose the Clockwork. <laughs> they, they, I think they changed this, that you can't actually carapace the, uh, carapace the, uh, Corrosive anymore. It looked like he, he, he tried to do that. I don't know when they changed it. Yeah. So, final tally is a one-for-one -one exchange between the two offlaners. But... Be a little bit worrying that the invoker can just run into everybody and not have to worry about getting brought down. Paparazzi playing it quite well with that Lincolns. The skin's damage has the no reflect. <laughs> I don't know what that okay. means. It's to prevent infinite damage. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, so when, I don't know when they changed that, but it used to be like Morphling was sometimes Pig versus Viper. You would replicate the Viper, and they would just cross skin each other in turn. Right. That was super. So I guess they changed it. Barely off the mark, not spotted. FN is there. They spot him now, and there's the lift up. They break through the Lincoln. Silence is out onto the Rubik already, but the Impale came out and connected onto two. Paparazzi very slowed, but they keep catch up with the clockwork and the ice pass is not going to hit there either. Paparazzi almost dying and is going to be saved at the last second. The disarm connects onto three as well. Dogfights in the area will have time lapse off cooldown in two seconds if things get a little bit too testy. They're able to force him back yet again. Disarmed and everything else to all hell. Man, Solution's not liking that sun strike. Not bad, but not enough. They're doing a... Paparazzi's doing an extremely good job cutting the end.
Well, and they have all these different uh, abilities to try and mess with Anti-Mage's right clicks coming through. Uh, they are going to spot this Roche now, and they want to get there. Paparazzi is TPing in, but I, I don't know if it's quite in time. The Tornado comes out. It doesn't connect on the resolution, and he isn't going to be able to do it. They catch the Ice Blast onto two as well, and now Clockwork trying to chase is not going to be able to kill off Paparazzi, but the Roche is already down, and resolution has the Aegis. Super important for Drow Ranger is falling further and further behind. Like, buy, she might have to consider like buying a BKB suit, but she really wants her MKB because she needs to deal with the three sources of evasion. The Butterfly, the Halberd, and the Solar Crest. She's not going to do any damage. She goes for BKB. She gets MKB, she might just die. Proc off. Sticky situation for Drow. I'm sure she regrets the Silver Edge now. Kind of sucks for her about how the game panned out, but that's how it goes with item builds. And now a Basher down on Anti Mage. It's going to become even more difficult. Um, I guess Glass Cannon and relying upon your supports is the other way that you can play this for IGV. Uh, it looks like Nyx Assassin is going to be going for a four staff for himself next. They have a lot of ways to keep him alive. All of these heroes, False Promise, Time Lapse, uh, Fate's Edict to be able to disarm the Anti-Mage. They've got a decent amount of stuns that have been hanged from in July. I actually think you just Fate's Edict the Vibrant and just ignore it. Okay. <laughs> because he doesn't have any way to break it right now. Yeah. That's a long duration disarm right now. Four and a half second disarm, seven second cooldown, use cats twice on him. And I guess he's immune to magic damage too, so don't get you won't get corrosive too. That's actually pretty nice. And fight, as long as you don't like it. This was a pub match, though. Of course, your Lina would probably Laguna Blade him, and then, you know, that's, that's always good. Pro match, you the can meat, Meatball blast him. Yeah. Pro match, you can expect the rest of your team to know what they're supposed to do around that spell. It is a really complicated hero to play and, you know, play around. It's almost like an, an IO to do at each point in time. And yeah, they're starting to fade Edict FN. Yeah, he, he's definitely the target of I don't even think you have Fate's Edict or anything else. Just maybe, I guess, a target that gets AA blasted. But you can just ulti that or type it. Paparazzi. Does he get lifted? Four staff? No. Roger. Not able to make it happen. And instead, they've been able to catch on to the Drow! Excuse me, the Oracle. He does fall. That would have been big if it was the Drow, but it was not. So, break there connects on the Anti-Mage. Almost level 25. Dogfights was not quick with the... I, I didn't see his position. He was probably going around trying to Now they have the Drow. He did time lapse him quickly. Where'd it go? It doesn't come out in time, and instead, Drow is just going to drop. Now, Clockwork taking a lot of damage. They do a buyback on Drow, but you don't want to have to use it. Well, it turns out that they're going to have to. Tornado connects onto nothing except for AM Illusions. That one hurt. Not quite. Didn't get two time lapses off in a row. I think he time lapsed himself there. Oh no, not Whoa. again. All right, well, they time lapse that one and then a couple of quick four staffs. They keep them back in and kill them off, they will. All right, a nice start to this. Can they make it happen a second time now? They're going to have the gust. It does get the silence in the midst of it, but did see Anti Mage able to blink out, keep himself alive. Tornado will not hit yet again. What a sick carrot face. Okay, weather the storm. Both T3s, bad shape. Did cost the Draw Ranger buyback, of course, which is not what you would want to have happen. <laughs> was already a very frustrating set of circumstances. Uh oh, FN. Accentuated. Is he going to end up getting caught? And July's there. Dog fights as well. Stun comes through. They connect. Sunstrike as well. Ice Blast is out. They stun up that guy, but. Immediately able to back out again, and now Ghostick, he's caught in July. Dogfights need to get out of there. He's just going to get torn asunder. And actually, Rubik now still time-lapse for himself. But two dead yet again, and this is the thing you were talking about. Anti-Mage getting out of control and just no answer for it. Yep. Resolution. Oh, Drown not getting the Aegis is, I think, uh, just super detrimental. You need multiple Aegis on Drown Ranger, so you can, like, if she had Aegis up in that fight, and the T3, they, I mean, they wouldn't even been pushing at that point. And now you kind of have to play for the opposite 
uh, type of game when you're versus AM, when you just wait for him to get two and have two. Like he, now he he can still get one more item, and after that's moonshot, but everything after that is marginal. That's the other way to deal with anti mage, but that's like fifty-five. Minutes. I think Empire may be able to end it, and we're at least take down a T3. Ghost Stick. They have some vision there on the paparazzi, but not wanting to push his luck. They will take down that tier 3. No, not quite. Take down the tier 3 tower, and they'll be able to hold on to it, IGV. So, at the very least, things sort of holding on for the moment. It's not the greatest in the world. It feels like IGV just need to win a fight, sort of. What's what's their avenue for doing that? What's the, the most important well, we just, thing? We just saw fight? one, which was uh, him attacking a carapace next to Okay. But I think that's going to change real fast with the this game. It's pretty much just kiting the AM during the entirety of his BKB. It's very tough. That's A, he has Blink. B, he has BKB. And 3, he has a pistol. Or C. <laughs> gotcha. I was picking up the but yeah. Well, somebody else who's in some trouble there. They got the breakout, and a DD was there on Drow as well, but Viper's still living through it. Resolution gets the stun. That is going to be dogfights falling. No, oh, they get the false promise at the last second. 16 HP still might end up falling regardless, and Paparazzi gets a double kill on the north side of the fight, so they are able to kite him away for the moment. Foshka starting to drop low. He is going to just get destroyed. It's a triple kill for Paparazzi. So while they were all chasing around the Drow and the Weaver, Paparazzi went to work. Yeah, Viper just got hexed at the beginning of the fight. I did not realize that he just picked up a hex. So Rezo actually has to be very, very scared now. Ten man falling off heavily. Farm. Like Drow's still useful because she busts out the Invoker who has a ton of attack speed. He didn't go for that. The first T3 shall finally fall. They're doing it. So now the Lincolns prevents the uh, prevents the blink abyssal to the mass panic of spells that get thrown in that person. Didn't find the lift onto the mix, but to what end? The only thing they really gain is going to be the spike carapace on the Rubik. Carapace Big is a pretty place. good spell to ha have. Yeah. You're yeah. versus an invoker. He doesn't have BKB. So okay. if you get hit by any of the AOE spells, you can potentially burst it down very easily with the AOE. I think it's better than the spell he had earlier. Okay, they need Roche on both sides, actually. Yeah, you, you said that the next timing is going to be when it is that uh, Anti-Mage starts to fall off. Um, I mean, is it sort of like a... a point where the, the cores and supports on the Dyer get enough items to further kite him, or is it more about like... Well, he's the main damage dealer on right. on Empire side. Viper went for all HP items. He's a tank. He doesn't do any damage. Clockwork, he's just there for control, so they AM can do damage, and so that they stop their damage coming out from Paparazzi and the other heroes. And he, he needs a way to deal with the Scythe right now. BKB's not a good solution to Scythe, because you can get Scythe before you just die. So they need like Lotus to work on the heroes so that he can pop his BKB out of sight. And there's these Chino events that need to happen, but Resolution is the only one that has a lot of farm. Or the IT Vitality, you have Nick Sesson who's had a Midas for a very long time. He's pretty low on net worth, but 10, 20 minutes on down the road, he's going to have Scepter and all these other annoying items that just is going to make life incredibly difficult. Yeah, Invoker is almost exalted too. And we also saw Invoker go for that AoE Deafening Blast, which has been really important. Like, all of these heroes are mainly right clickers, uh, which obviously gets disabled when you end up having that AoE Deafening Blast. And actually, Paparazzi, look at this guy back behind enemy lines. Angel Eye's going to be able to find the stun. The Hex comes out immediately. Actually, four staff him closer to Paparazzi. Can they get out of there? The BKBs will pop, though, and now they've got him. The time lapse, they keep him alive. False promises there as well, but they are still going to be able to control out Takata. And no other regening spells or survivability defensive cells are there to keep him alive. And Paparazzi controlled, going to be killed off. Suddenly, it all falls apart for IGV. I'm a little surprised they thought they could execute Kill AM. Four. He has. He has. I don't know. Who's really doing damage? Invoker, Sunstrike, really? I mean, he has so much magic resistance. It's not really an, an evasion that he's not. Wise. 
Nyx does no damage. Weaver does no damage. Oracle does no damage. So it's pretty much just a Drow range, but Drow is not that farmed to the point where she can just blow up anything. And that four staff who that came out, I believe, from Clockwork, maybe from uh, Roger too, saved him during the hex. I didn't see if the Drow got the Silver Edge proc on him too, because maybe if like yeah, maybe maybe they missed that. That feels like it might be one of those avenues to he was at like half the maybe actually, but I think it was more than. Um, and he has full field too. Oh God, his magic was. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty absurd. Uh, it does look like Super will live there. Gets the Bait Edict on himself. It's back out yet again. Resolution. Oh, if they catch Paparazzi right now, this would be such a tremendous moment. And I thought he was going to go for it, but he's just going to send his illusions forward. A little bit of chip damage. Back on out afterwards. Roche is the call. Who do they give it to? Get both FN? Oh. Alright. Just for Rezo. Still the most important hero in the game. No blink cooldown for him. Flip it. Let to fly around. Oh yeah, he took the attack speed talent. I've been seeing a lot more of the, the blink cooldown, but... Apparently Miracle does beat attack to so a lot of hands and follow the suit. <laughs> it's funny the way that goes. The blink cooldown's nice. Yeah. Just popping around everywhere. It makes it super easy to play here. Maybe that's why, is because like you can have a if you're more judicious about your blinks and you're not just blinking at random. Probably is better. Another big item pickup now. Uh, Rubik has the Aghanim Scepter. I think that this almost instantly changes it to uh, a much better pickup to take time lapse. <laughs> like that's the best spell to take now. Would you agree? Uh, yes. Would would agree. Again, just to keep in everybody's mind what this match means. If IGV are able to win this, they would go up with a ostensibly two game advantage over Empire and put them on the path towards being able to make an upper bracket run. Uh, likewise, Empire, if they want to keep their hopes alive of that, they would tie it up with IGV if they could win this game. A lot on the line for both of these teams where they would love to be able to not have to drop down to that lower bracket. IGV gonna sit in their base until Invoker buyback cools down. I don't yes. think Empire can give them a chance. Time to press, press on towards them. Still, but actually, they don't have to team. It's tough. You know, four and a half minutes left, and they've been able to keep the lanes pushed into IGB's base pretty much the whole time. Oh, Reza has DD. Oh my god. All right, time to party. 500 damage a pop. Paparazzi almost showing there. He's just going to walk forward, take the tower he does get. Well, Fate's Edict. So he get disarmed for a moment. Oh, I got disarmed. They got the tower, though. Yep. Are they just going to do that again? Should. Damage. And in July, stuns. So hard to make it happen. They actually found the right one, but Ghost Stick with the counterplay. He's caught dogfight for the moment. He does have time lapse. These illusions doing too much. And again, they use both of their defensive spells on dogfights. They steal Sakuchi, not time lapse that time. So it looks like the rest of Empire will get out. Dogfights just barely live in there. Yeah, if they time lapse, they can actually just blink and attack the tower and then just time lapse that. It's kind of like the X. Actually, uh, I think it's better than X. In that regard. Although it's just Sakuji for now, so really yeah. good by dogfights to not give them that. Missile onto Nyx, time lapse, and then bounces back. The spike carapace turnaround. Well played. The four staff pushing away and keeping that Rubik up in the air. The well catch is also coming out. He's able to jump away. Sakuchi saving the life of a Rubik right there. They're out of mana. They don't have that much time left with the Aegis. One and a half minutes with the Aegis and with no buyback. I'm going to go for three minutes. So I still think they can do significant structural damage, if, if not, at least try to. 
mean, Paparazzi this whole game, and IGV in particular, have shown just really great tenacity, uh, you know, not sort of overextending ever, or being very patient with their timings to make sure that they don't, like, take a bad fight. But Paparazzi right now does not have buyback, and <sighs> very scary for them to get caught. For Empire, uh, where are we looking now for them? Is it, it, like, do they need to wait for the next round of Aegis since this one's expiring in 45 seconds? I think they can right click some buildings though. Okay. I think they have a really hard time killing any space. Uh Looks like Dogfight is up on top of lane. Oops. Remember, X is there, Sunstrike off the mark, cold snap as well. Resolution going to Manta, back out. So they retreat and again. So we did just get in July level 20. So he has plus 120 GPM coming through. Did not take the agility. He's going for F later on. Yeah, that agility is kind of cool. I like. I guess they're thinking this game's going to last a while longer. I was surprised he didn't go for uh, seven hundred though. Stunned the anti major who didn't have his BKB on for a very long time. He did have the ages. That's a, that's a good time to kill Rezo. Any items? Juggling all these things in the backpack. I mean, this is the point too. Like, 4,200 gold on him. You can maybe start to pull a little bit of that into FN, give him a moon shard or something else. He has a halberd, so other ways to deal with Sakata right-clicking all of them. Yeah, what's the play now? Anti-Mage is, like, eight slotted. <laughs> I think it's giving uh, giving Clockwork Moon Shards time. <laughs> Make. So. I like the animation of, of Clockwork when I click. Go all smooth with the shovel hit. Okay, they miss it. Oh, we're just gonna hit by that by now. So. Yeah, this is where the game starts to get really funky. Because the anti mage is not getting any stronger, so him farming is not particularly useful for their team. By the end of the game, here's the real question. Is Resolution going to have double the net worth of the next highest? He's at 41,000 right now. I think he's going to give some give a Moonshard to someone. Oh, yeah. He has 4,000 surplus right now. I guess they can go with like an ideal double root. Maybe like what Arcane DD. Just link up there. BKB and right with the tower. To back off. Right. So poor for the... BKB's actually slipped. Ooh, Hex up on the top lane. They found themselves an Ancient Apparition. Got caught a little bit slipping. Rubik going to back out again. Resolution is still here. Has the Abyssal Blade ready to jump if he wants to. Has been able to find onto one, but there's the Impale. It connects as well. The lift is there for Paparazzi. Gets four stepped away. Tornado lift up. Ghostic still chasing. There's another Hex that comes out. They're able to keep Clockwork back before the Cogs come out. Now he's out of mana getting ran down. Get the jump away though, it looks like the answer is no. Another kill going, two down for Empire. IGB striking back. Yeah, it's gotten long enough to the point where AM actually needs a team. There's this window like 25, 40 ish, 40, 50 ish, where AM can just completely win the game himself. Now, at this point, now that IG Vitality has so many items and like, even Drow. If Drow's six slotted, she spreads a lot of damage out to the Weaver. Even Weaver, who was the four, can now become like a two and a half, I would say. So, like, your your damage and your and everything is just way more spread out on the side of the team. Oh, no. A point where heroes like Rubik and all the other supports are just going to die really quickly if left alone. So, Last Shrine will be taken down outside of the base. Resolution oh still far. Okay, he bought something. Look at Draw Ranger also the damage. 700, almost 800 damage with a DD and an Alacrity. What did he buy? Uh, he bought a gem? He bought a Moon Shard for Viper. Okay. And I, I think don't he... know. I think I saw one pick up. Yeah. He wouldn't base, but. Well, a Lotus Orb is there for Ancient Apparition, so now they're starting to get into these other items to deal with the Sheep Stick that's been such a big problem coming from the Invoker. And he is going for a Refresh Orb, so simultaneously double sheep and all the other spells that he has at his disposal. I don't know. I, 
I'm going to have to make sure that my camera work is on point. <laughs> There's going to be some craziness going on it's gonna here. It's going to look like the apocalypse. <laughs> Just like hellfire raining down from the ceiling and fire, ice, sun. Oh, in July, there's the opening. Do they try and go for more, though? Paparazzi is still there, slowed because of the Ghost Walk. They force tap him forward. Hex is there as well with a hook shot. The counterplay is there from Ghostick. All right, they keep him back yet again. Tornado lifts up onto two. The silence a little bit off the mark. A good ice path from far away, connected on all four of those heroes from IGB, and they have to back out. Painful ice blast. Now, AM also has man issues. He got EMP'd and then he couldn't actually do anything else in the fight. Problems. Roche is up. Clockwork Flare has scouted it out. Anti-Mage busy striding up in base, trying to punch his mana, but it looks like he's going to be able to make a for Roche. Paparazzi split pushing out all the lanes of fire. They had to respond. They want the support system. Right now, you just want. Like, you don't... If you see the AM out alone, that's great, but he's unlikely going to be out alone, so you want to kill any of these other heroes that are split pushing out the lanes. And it should be pretty easy with that. Well, and that's the, the big trump card that we've seen so far, as like the ability of uh, IGB to find those pickoffs. And now they're moving all of them down to the bottom. Nyx is going to pass by FN here. The gem, I don't know where it's actually at right now. Resolution blinks forward. Chase, not going. Roger wrapping around from behind with even Vendetta. They're looking, they want it. A lot of damage could come out quickly, but Ghost it caught two, and the Ice Blast was good. They're able to take down another. No, but the time lapse keeping them alive for the moment. They've already lost that Oracle. They're able to jump forward Ghost it with another amazing hook shot. The pistol almost came out and caught Paparazzi, but he does Ghost Walk away and make his escape. But they lost two still for IGV. Look at Weaver. Oh, man. Able to get it, but is he going to get caught? Oh, looks like the answer is yes. Time lapse, probably not going to help you a ton here. He is going to be killed off. Oh, and that's a stolen time lapse as well for Roger. Stolen well, time lapse, big deal. See, so try going with it. Uh, is there any way for them to stop it? I mean, I guess you can disable the root victory. He's going to have it for a long time, too. And he has gem also. Yep. You want to deal with it for five minutes? Oh, my. <laughs> That could be game changing. It's like the Rage and the Siege or the X pullback Siege resolution has his eyes on Rusha. Yeah, that, that's one of those moments where, of course, if you're the Weaver, you want to be able to escape and get out, but the chance that it actually happens is so low. And then Rubik being there as well. Now they have Lotus Orbs. Now they have Time Lapse. They've been able to hit all of their spells really effectively. I feel like Ghost Stick has had such a big influence, more so than we've seen on most Clockworks played in the offlane position this tournament. Yep. Been getting in there. Okay, level 25 still not out for very many heroes. Viper and anti mission time ago. Wow, he went 75 attack range. 20 armor. Pretty good. Viper. Yeah, 43. Yeah. Ground went 425, Arc Ship Agility. Surely helps when you're pushing out lanes or pressing precision armor. Oh, they are going to be pushing down bottom here with a lot of illusions. The racks are open, and in July has an Aghanim Scepter. So even though they have, you know, the Ag they have the um, Aegis and Time Lapse and all this other stuff, they still can't feel confident pushing out because of all this split push that's coming from the Invoker and the Drow. Yep, even the precision. Oh, Ben. I feel bad asking this because I have no idea what the heck's going on as far as the sort of winning this game, but do you think either team is like feeling comfortable at all or more uh, confident? Do you think that there's a team that's really ahead at this point? It, net worth doesn't really matter at, in this stage, right? Net, net worth is not bad. Well, it net matters on the supports, but the net worth different doesn't right. matter. It's pretty much how far your supports are relative to other supports. Normally, people look at the top of the network chart. I actually think it's most important to look at the bottom of the network. Okay, so you have like AA who had the, has that Lotus or very important item for him to have versus the Mass Hexes. Uh, Oracle and A both have that GPM for talent. So they will start Clockwork hitting over Midas, probably super regrettable. 60 minute game plus. Uh, yeah, and then you have the Nyx Assassin who was doing pretty poorly, but 
he's been able to catch up on the back of the minus and now has 7 damage. So like, AM doesn't have a BKB in his inventory, and Carapace will destroy him. As well as the lower cooldown and pale on the Deceptor, so pushing high ground is incredibly difficult. Because he's not, he's like not chill. Not. Resolution. Look at that time lapse. God, it's so good. Yeah, that is huge. I mean, Lotus Orbs come out, the time lapse is there. It's a good stun, it's a lot of damage. It's only a 14 second cooldown, and he ends up getting blown up. They didn't have it in time. Oh man, oh me, oh my, resolution, hexed, what a guy, he is maybe gonna drop it to get the BKB off. Trying to run away, dogfights, gets the jump out of there, and now taking out all that mana in July, even though he was underground, still gets found. And they have to buy back. FN still inside the base, going to get the four staff to the low ground, but they ended up losing that range rex. These time lots have been incredibly hard for that quest. The cast of the fight. The game is just so much damage right now that people just buy it. One second, maybe? Not very much time to react. And MKB is going to be up for Viper as well. And yes, he hasn't been hitting as hard as possible, but with that item, you might start to be dealing a bit more of that damage. And I don't know, it, it feels like this high ground is really hard to push. Uh, how much longer is time lapse around? It's actually not around that much longer. So they might be able to get the melee barracks out with it. Uh, and we'll just have to keep our eye on that. Yeah, I think he's going to do it. Tornado lifts up. Maybe a little bit scary. That hex does come out. He gets time lapsed and forced to blink away, but they got what they came for. It might be at that point, if you're Weaver, you like. You just don't even don't cast. It. Well, you have to cast it, but you just like that should be your priority. Like, don't even cast swarm if you're even worried about getting your time lapse. That was, I would say that is not that's not doesn't even go close to as clean as it would have. He said pretty emphatically, don't give him time lapse. We gotta take a look now. We're 58 minutes into this game. Level 25s are starting to get more online. 20% percent, uh, cooldown reduction for the Rubik. Um, anything else that's really of importance? I guess we're a little ways away still from the um, Nyx Assassin one. Spike Carabus damage might be good. The 40 movement speed is also nuts. Not sure what he'd go for. Not sure. He did reflect the mana hole. But he ain't even So much Onto him. I guess if it's on. He has 3,000 mana. Oh my god, that would be so <laughs> sick. If you could reflect that, like, it's, like a 3,000 damage mana void back onto Anti Mage with a double carapace. Oh my god, that would be the craziest <laughs> way for this game to end. <laughs> well, and so, alright, it's plus 200%, so that means it's three oh, times it's the damage, right? Okay, yeah, so 9,000 damage, and then he has, what, 62% magic resistance? So it, it'd be 3,000 damage. That's like almost all his HP, but that's so incredibly unlikely, but still possible. All right, let's see it. We're all about the craziness here. Only one laying the barracks down. There is a tier three down as well, and Invoker has picked up the refresher. So time to see if Paparazzi has been practicing his combos. Oh my God, AM might hit a thousand GPM. It's what? crazy. I know. 9.59. All right, will he save our predictions? Will it happen? Ghost Stick also has an Aghanim Scepter. Anything else that you're seeing item-wise that really sticks out is important. Uh, Scotty AM's a little different. He's overpowered. Might as well buy all the stuff. Oh my god, that's a big Ice Blast. Yeah, it connects onto a lot of them. Super need to retreat. And of course, this is Aghanim Scepter, so he can't actually... Oh wait, no, it's not. Excuse me, Poshka doesn't have that yet. Thousand net worth right now on that anti mage, like we talked about, and the slow siege coming from Empire. <laughs> and that's giving away, you know, gems and moon shards and everything else. Solution. This is, uh, I thought it was less out of rags, but not too much. We also have the uh, ancient apparition getting the plus eight percent slow and. Uh, resistance increases. 
Ben taking some damage, four step back again. A lot of little cardies here, gotta take those down, but beware. It's resolution ready to jump at a moment's notice. I think Draw Ranger has been pressing her precision R on, which is very important. They need to get these lanes shoved out. Okay, AM. You have too many <laughs> items, buddy. <laughs> yeah, he's got his boots backpacked. Full backpack on his way to school. He has his beach house. He has his like beach house next to his beach house. He has mountain house, ski resort house, his island house, his island. Man, could ever wish for a and blind he, man that cares nothing, cares not for magic. He's blindfolded. Does that mean he's blind? I think so. Or he's just a cool guy, like uh, <laughs> cool guys wear blindfolds. Now. Exactly. I don't know. One, that one movie. I don't remember what it is, and I'm not going to try to make the analogy right now, because honestly, I feel like this game could blow up in a second, and it might just be that second. They found themselves a couple of openings. The pushback, Deafening Blast is there, but Resolution popped the BKB, found in July. Is he going to get brought down? Is he going to get clipped? He does have Spike Carapace back up soon. A second Deafening Blast. Now stealing it, that still is going to be the death of the Rubik who stole the Deafening Blast. Gem on the ground, over to the south though, FN hitting the barracks, able to take the range. Is he going to be able to get out of there in time, the BKB wearing off? It's not before he gets his TP completed. So one ranged barracks down for the cost of the Clockworks life. Glyphy is too, very important. Rubik doesn't get a great spell. They got did, they did get that time lapse off onto the next super important keep him. He's he's gonna be your main disabled speed because you can't absorb off his stuns. So like they're relying on lotuses to get him out of the hex. So if they need outside stuns, cold snap. Yep. So the uh, I guess MKB mini stun perhaps, but that's not gonna stop from popping his speed. Paparazzi, where are you going? Scary time. Right now, the only one without buyback on the Dire team is Nyx Assassin. He will have it back up in a minute and a half. It does look like right now, IGV feel uncomfortable maybe moving out a little bit further than they have been in the past. They did reclaim the gem, so seeing if they can get any of these birds down. Two of them up on the high ground. Scattered out yet. Roshan not yet up now. Empire still five strong. All they lost was... Just a little bit of net worth on clock. Resolution is there. They, they spot him. Oh, it's so hard. He's going to walk up the hill, though. They get the stun. They get the sheep. They're pushing him forward. They're taking him down. Can they kill him off, though? Yes. They got him down at least once. An ice path going to come through. Ghost Dick has caught him, but the Deafening Blast pushback in July in trouble, but not dead as of yet. Can they get here in time to time lapse and keep him alive? They will. So they found themselves a couple. They've already bought back on Resolution. What a trap. Woof. I didn't expect them to be out that far. Rezo didn't expect them to be out that far. You didn't expect them to be out that far. That was crazy good. Just phenomenal positioning by them. Looking at the exact one place that anti mage was going to be just outside the range of his team. I don't actually know if they... They might have actually four-stepped him away from his team. I think that they did, yeah. It was either that or Empire four-stepped him because that's what they've been doing as soon as he gets hexed. But ideally, you'd load us open, right? So maybe it's like Clockwork. Four-step the same. But that, that was... Ooh, that were forced out that was uh, causing him to be way too far away from us. You got MKB proc that last day. Yeah. Woo. Scary stuff. And further scary because it is going to be no buyback for seven minutes right now, this anti-mage. In July, scouting things out in this area. They have a gem or anything else like that. Ghostic does have one. He's found an opening. They push back onto two. This is controlling Paparazzi. He gets time lapse back, though, and pulled away. And now they've got caught onto Anti-Mage. He gets his BKB off. Still in a little bit of trouble. Now Stolen is going to be that deafening blast. It's an AoE ready to throw it if they want it. But the catch up, the lift onto FN. They take him down in time. In July, gets the hex there again. They steal Spike Carapace, push back from Paparazzi. But they won't be able to find any more. Paparazzi like spun, I think, at the last second, and his ice wall was way out of that. Well, Drow Ranger still pushing out lanes passively, I suppose. Their lanes need a little bit of work, but Roshan is up right now. They they don't want to give this to AM. AM, yeah, he has 
It's eight items, but don't make it nine. One of them being the Aegis. <laughs> he doesn't have buyback. That's the most crucial thing in this game of everything. Everything else. All about the AM buyback. If they can find a way to steal that Roshan, it gives them such a great opening where they can play really aggressive. I don't actually think they need it. They just need to prevent AM, uh, anti -beat. Okay. Like, they need a very specific sequence of events to go down without, like, mass lotuses and defensive force stabs coming out in order to save the anti -beat. And they need to be able to connect with the Hex. He has to be able to right-click, call her, and hook shot in. The list goes on and on. Call her, hook shot in onto dog fights. Does have the heal. False promise, keeping him alive for the moment, but he might take too much damage. Disarm three. Can they find any more on the back of this? Beaver still taking a lot of damage. Has time lapse himself, but is just going to be brought down. Does he need to buy back for this one? Kind of depends on what else happens. Anti-Mage buys an Aghanim Scepter in the middle of all of this. Is he going to end up leaving? The BKB has popped. He's taking a ton of damage. They are going to be able to kill off another. And now Ghost, or rather Cold Snap, is used onto Paparazzi. He's trying to get out of here, but still in trouble. Trying to run. The Hookshot connects. They caught Paparazzi as well. That's three dead. They all have buyback. But Empire, the path to Roche is open if they want to go for it. Did he, s did he reflect a Hex or something like that? I'm not sure what he reflected. I don't know, but it was there in the last second. Resolution brought it out to him. Oh, looks like uh, Empire gonna have the lead now with this Aegis. Surely, I test this. It's way too far out. Now Viper six up. It's been that long into the game, so Michael will carry the cheese. Resolution Aegis. Surely the right choice because I still don't have buyback for a few minutes. And now I think IG Vitality have to play defensively while they don't have <laughs> buybacks. All right, how the, the tables have turned, really. 67 minutes in, and we're looking at this situation now where you have buyback off cooldown in four minutes, but more importantly, the Aegis there for Rezo. And then you said those three heroes that don't have it for IGV. Can they hold? Like, is this something where you can't just try and, you know, bum rush the last set of barracks for Empire? They've held for, like, the last 30 minutes. So. Okay. <laughs> I think it's super easy with Nyx. It's, oh, it's not super easy. It's much easier with Nyx tests his eggs. I think the more important part about the last five minutes that's happened is that Empire found a way to beat IG by telling the team fight. It's to go in on, the, on dogfights. Yeah. Dogfights, you blow out a false promise, and then all you really have left is the... Is the uh, Time lapse. You want to be able to stagger your cooldowns. One time lapse on someone, one false promise on someone, then you time lapse again after coming back up, or stab someone. Like you, you want to be able to save multiple people, but this way they have a hard time saving even one. Dog fights playing it fast and loose. Resolution taking the other one. They're forced to use a glyph, but they've already lost a range barracks on the middle lane. Can they take more? FN taking a lot of damage is going to be able to disjoin a couple of those last attacks coming through from Zakata, and still the illusions are hitting in the bottom lane. Paparazzi looking for an opening onto Anti-Mage, but they just can't find it. And they still have to deal with these creeps that are coming through the top. It is so hard to deal with this methodical push coming in from Team Empire. Oh, Drow actually went for Satanic? Satanic versus AA? What? Yeah. What? I think uh, <laughs> Scepter is really good here. It's... I, I mean, if you're going to be versus Megas, I guess you need both. But... Satanic usually not that much. It, I, I think he really does need damage. He needs as much damage as possible. He's sitting at 570, which is still pretty good. But we're talking about like 70 minutes. Yeah. And anti mage taking him damage. As a DD. Maybe the time for them to finally go for that full all out push. But. You gotta play it safe. Yeah, clip down. So, a momentary lapse in our Oh my, silent stun. They've got him caught. They've got him killed. Aegis down. Can they find any more? Dogfights thought about chasing Roger. Thinks the better of it because FN is off to the side here. In July, still trying to do whatever he can, but they don't actually have any ability to control this Viper. But now with the BKB down, they potentially could. Glimmer Cape keeps them back, but they do have all of the Megas coming out now. IGB gonna have to hold against even more. And. They're even having trouble dealing even more with these illusions. Well, at least they don't have to worry about the racks anymore. <laughs> it's, it's actually kind of nice because they were split up there. They they, they sacrificed the Aegis for the right side, threw all the attention over there. FN just right-clicked down the mid, and then Rezo got it as they went back mid. So now they can actually concentrate their defenses into one centralized point, and they uh, they have the region on the towers. So this Mega, Mega Cruise by no means uh, spells the end of the game because IG Vitality, they have weathered the storm until their buybacks are up again. Actually, not Invoker. 
some of their buybacks are going to be up and what are Empire going to do? Really wait for another Aegis and cheese? Like, they're not going to be yeah. easily distracted because everything's right there. You can't, like, all your screen's only going to be on those T4s and just huddling around. But at the same time, wow, as soon as wow. they sh split push out the side lanes and go cliff, they're going to get a pistol by anti major. That's what they should be worrying about. So now, you need even more items. 70 minutes, and who would think you would? But you need flats. It's pretty standard. You probably need a Maelstrom, I would say, on anyone. I don't you know. Probably Trial Ranger, I would say, needs to transition to like an Axe Mjolnir build to deal with the Megas. I don't know what's happening too much for the other guys, like what they're trying to aim for, but I, I don't even know if they have time to think about what items they want to get. Yeah, I mean, the pressure is coming fast and loose, and we have in July on level 25, so that spike carapace damage could be huge. Oh, we you got talked it. about that. <laughs> Well, you don't need movement speed, you're just chilling your teeth first, <laughs> or your egg. <laughs> so. Well, they know what they need to defend, and burrowed by it. Playing that Lurker to absolute perfection. Okay, they are sprinting a trap right now, smoke is good there. Hookshot connects, they found Invoker. one at the very least, trying to push him back, Invoker. Is he going to be able to get out of there? He does manage to play his way out. But FN now trying to chase, trying to kill off Super. It's not going to happen for the moment. They get the lift up onto Injuli. FN maybe a bit too far forward, but the four steps keeping him alive again. Tornado lifts up. Mage fight there to do enough damage, and they have disarm. They're starting to take him down. Ghost it goes back in again, able to catch on to dog fights. Another pushback, Deafening Blast came, and they're trying to kill off this Viper. Does look like indeed it's going to be able to happen, and the tier fours not taking any damage as they kill off that big bad Viper. Now Ghost it, and he ran out, is going to be able to hook shot away. But that was a great hold by IGV. Great time lapse. Empire almost sprung the trap, dude. That, they were so close to actually killing the, killing the Invoker. Dude, dogfights has to be sweating so much right now. This is it's so crazy. They I think like he blinked four staff and then lifted him up and then anti mage bursted him down. Tried to burst him down with the abyssal. That was close so close to being game over. That was three minutes on Invoker's buyback. They had a pretty good window there, but looks like this game is still gonna go on a while longer as Vitality try to prepare for the onslaught of Mega. And now you kind of have this other avenue for finding pickoffs in the game. If you have these four heroes that can push out the lanes themselves, Nyx Assassin can look for a pickoff and then boots and travel two onto him. Which is risky as all hell, but it does feel like they need to make some type of risk if they want to win. Do they? You think so? You think uh, IGB are still fine? Chill T4. It's not like Viper's getting any stronger. It's not like AM's getting any stronger. They still have Midas's. No, wait. Well, maybe it is just going to be a quick kill on Mapushka regardless. Yeah, that, that that does open up the map out a lot for them. And Drow Rangers, Marsum Ship Aura gives, I'm not sure how much, 110 damage oh to, my God. <laughs> to the creeps. So it looks like I do see a Mjolnir coming out. As well. Ooh, let's see. Okay, Dog Fights just got crushed. Uh oh. Well, that, oh, he has no buyback. I, oh, wait, that, he's, that, he's super cool. uh, he has buyback in 35 seconds, okay. I believe, as long as he has the gold for it. Yeah, he does. He has 3,200 in the bank. Wonder if they're gonna get baited out by this. I don't know. Like, I, I think the game's been so hectic that no one's been able to really keep track of buyback timer. On either side, just because they've been having him like huge team fight mostly. I mean, at the very least, they're going to be trying to. Uh, you know, force a buyback from the Weaver, but they also don't have Ancient Apparition for another 30 seconds themselves. This is a game where you get talent is value. <laughs> Super value. I think everyone is taking it. Uh-oh. Invoker lifted. Bloodthorn taking a lot of damage, but does get saved. So they're going to keep him alive for the moment, trying to refresh, trying to run. He can actually live through all of that, though. They easy to get to the shrine. Uh -oh. Spooky. Nah, it wasn't enough, and he doesn't have buyback. He will very shortly, though. Three seconds, and he'll be able to get it. All right, buyback on both Invoker and Weaver. They were able to outlast it. Okay, this is the time where they should definitely 75 minutes. They know they have until 83 until... So they can push with next Aegis. That should be should be fairly straightforward. I, w I actually think they need to kill Dogfights. All in on Dogfights, and then go for it. What a game. 75 minutes in right now, 38 to 33, and it still doesn't feel like the lead is completely safe for either team at all. Definitely proud of you. Oh, yeah. Empire's position. 
but even, yeah, they're not certain favorites here. Things could, like, the thing about this point is, like, you get super eager because they don't have any buybacks. Resolution is there. They get a little bit off the mark, though. Able to catch on to Rubik. He is going to drop, I believe. Right click's coming through. Paparazzi trying to kill him off, but he's able to get away. Rubik making the escape, and now they focused all their attention onto him. What's left in the tank to deal with the rest of Empire? Wait. Good deal. They almost killed, uh, they almost killed dog bites. This pair has to stay alive. Super dog bites. If, I think if either of them die without buyback, it's game. I, uh, actually, if, I guess if any of them die without buyback, it's game. They need all five. Nyx is there for the control. Uh, Weaver and Oracle are there for the saves on the import cores, and Invoker and Drow are there for the, for the damage. So all five heroes on the side of IG, IG Vitality completely integral to their defense. No one is useful. Well, Roshan is back up at this point, so if Empire go and decide to check that, uh, it'd be a very quick and easy way to secure their lead even further, but it doesn't look like they're super interested in that. Much more just trying to keep these lanes pushed in. There is a DD. We were way past that point where there's double power root spawn. Pick, I think I still think Arcane plus uh, DD is is the dream for trying to assault these T4. Smoked up here, able to jump forward and find himself an opening. Weaver dropping low. He does get the time lapse off though, but they get him again. They're able to force step away, and that is going to be Nyx Assassin down. They changed their attention, so Dogfight still lives. How can they get out with the rest of them? They forced another buyback from that Nyx, like we said. And it looks like IGV again are going to hold. What do they need to do? Oh, Roger? He ends up falling, and Ghost Dick jumped in at the same time. He's left all alone. Another Ice Blast coming out, but not going to connect Sunstrike off the mark. And Dogfight's thought about chasing, but thinks the better of it. In July, jump forward. Spike Carapace now trying to run the lift up on the Tornado. If they can manage to find that last little bit of damage on Viper, it would have been big but it does not happen. Super almost dying to Mega Creeps, too. They're rotating their buybacks, though, which is kind of nice. So who has buyback? Oracle, Drow, that's it, on, on IG Vitality. Oh, man. <laughs> they know how to keep the blood pumping in this one. OK. Anti-Mage going for a Silver Edge now. So that should be his ninth, tenth, <laughs> actually, we got 10th <laughs> item. <laughs> Silver Edge is actually pretty important because they need to be able to get the jump. They can't always completely ward their base. If they drop sentries on all sides, they can just de-ward them. They can't really protect it because most of them are going to be centralized around those T4 towers. So being able to assault with Shadow Blade, that was the epic conclusion to one of the games in the Boston Major Finals, Grand Finals. And one of the best ways to assault the base because towers have such limited uh, vision. People don't have room for gems. Texting is just not a thing this late into the game. Yeah. Well, IGV still pushing out, and they're keeping that gem on dogfights to make sure that that same thing you're talking about at least doesn't happen for now. But if they ever let up for even a second or two, that's all it takes to win the game. Four minutes on two big buybacks and six minutes on Nyx. That's a big window. And the Asian cheese. Okay, make that 10 items. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's not going to pick it up. Look okay, at this. No backpack's items, full. Yeah. And they're all like big ticket items too. Time to get a courier for himself as well. If I see Roger by one ward, that's it. <laughs> or Tome, or Gem, or Smoke, anything. TP scroll, they're all yours, buddy. Actually, he even Roger has bots now. Oh, they lift up, they spot him out, they see him, they're able to impale, and the BKB is there. Paparazzi needs to run away. Can he get to the fountain region in time? I don't know if it's going to be enough to heal him back up. The damage might have already been dealt. Salve up quickly. Oh, needs to He's stay alive. He is. Okay. He wasn't quad. Mid maxer to the, to the end. Yep. Oh, FN out of mana, but pops the BKB and wanted to kill off that drow, but it doesn't happen. Have they baited him out enough? Ghost Dick is just gone. That's Aegis down. And also, they're able to impale Anti-Mage. He's in trouble. He's out of mana. He's starting to fall. Resolution dies down. He does have buyback, but that's two minutes without him on the field. Maybe they can force one. Roger almost dropping low to that one as well. 50 HP left for him, and Mapushka gets Tornado lifted up. They're going to try and take down the Nature Apparition, but want to look for more. FN or Ghostic are the big targets if they can find them. FN caught, cold snapped, shaped as well. IGV might just be doing it. They're taking down all of the cores and supports of Empire. My What's God. What's happening? 
Aichi and Vitality are playing so smoothly at this point in the game. You would think they would be choking so much under pressure. Mega creeps, like no buybacks on three of their cores, people getting hexed, and people coming from invis in all three directions inside their base. But no, they're keeping it cool. They're like saving people at like 20% from False Promise and time lapse. Like they're force snapping people out of cogs even like 20 seconds into the fight. Like it's crazy how good their teamwork is, right? And I don't know if they can even force the buybacks because they're up against Megas, but they will be able to weather the storm until two of their buybacks are down. Namely Paparazzi and well, they're looking to try and pressure right now. And if things become hectic inside the Empire base, and yeah. they have to defend. Who has, who's going to defend their base? Oh, wait, there's a helmet. Look at this army of mega melee creeps and rain creeps inside their base. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. That's really important. They can drag the creeps inside the fountain, and they can actually stave off their T-Force from dying. Okay, they're, oh my god. Okay, T-Force, they're, they're doing it. They're, they're making this happen. There's still a T2 on top, so they can't get megas right now. But Viper buys back, and they're hitting the tier fours. Still 20 seconds before anti mage. This is so risky. Ghost Tick jumps in. He's able to catch onto two, but they end up force staffing him out. And now FN trying to run in there as well. Super in trouble. They still haven't bought back on anti mage. IGV. This is so dangerous right now, and they're just trying to get away. But Roger looking for that opening. He was able to steal tornado. It would be a great spell to try and run them down. Ghost Tick finds another hook shot. He's been able to catch onto one. Drow Ranger is caught. Can he be killed off? He's taking so much damage, and I think he is just going to have to be the sacrificial lamb. Ghost Stick still looking for more, but can't find anybody else as of yet. They killed off Sakata. He immediately buys back. Dogfight's 25 too, so he has that Takuchi movement. Uh, resolution, BOT into the base, BKB to attack, and it looks like Ghost Stick's going to die now. Ghost Stick, he ends up falling. Okay. Okay. Collector bearings, Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lordy. Ben, what is happening? How oh, Dom Creeps are... Like, how How do you even have <laughs> the presence to think of this one? The games is crazy. You think, like, okay, do we need? Do we force out their buybacks? Do we need to push out all these lanes? But, no, yeah, they have the Helmet Dominator. It seems like they've been in this situation before. Like, that, the Mega Melee Creep taking the damage from the T4, they almost have more HP than the T4 towers. Not as much armor, but... Still, yeah. it's, it's you don't want your T fours. If you if you lose your T fours, you can just like super easily get BKB thrones or, um, and there's nothing you can do. These T fours are the fashion of the defense against the BKB backdoor, or not even backdoor, just Zerg. Okay, so they walked away with two sets of racks. Honestly, they don't really matter that right now. What matters is that they're like two thirds away from Megas, but that T two is still up. Who was that in that top lane? I don't know. At this point, it was the Drow Ranger. <laughs> That's right, in July. Charge in, I believe in you. Well, Anti Mage has 1,300 last hits. That's definitely going to be the highest, at least so far. Oh, man. Okay. Viper with the heart as well for himself. Being brought out by the Courier. How much gold has a game from GPM telling you? We have, what, 84 minutes, there's been 260 GPM and 120 GPM Yeah, from Nyx. I don't know when they got it, but that totals to, what, 240 times an hour? <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot of freaking GPM, man. Yeah, it's going to be nuts. And, and looking forward, there's a couple more 25s that are still left. Ancient Apparitions and Oracles. Ancient Apparitions is really important. Because they, they need to pop these Lincolns, Savage and uh, you can only false promise one of them off. Yeah. So I totally think he gets a four. That is Clockwork Battery Celebrations, whatever. 20% cooldown reduction of Rubik is okay. It's good, but it's not completely game-changing. Anyone right. else? Nyx has been... Oracle. Oracle might hit yeah. 25. Damn. That's Either a cast 250 range. cast range. I mean, two second false oh, promise yeah, is also pretty good. good. It's not like he has refresher though. So Oracle also going for POT. Okay, I need to check my max. Yes, yeah, looking like we are still a little ways away from Nyx, but Clockwork hooked in. They're able to find that Invoker again. He does get four staffed away for the moment. False promise keeping him alive as well as the time lapse combo together. FN, there's the Lotus Orb to keep him alive. He pops his BKB. Been five seconds for a very long time, probably more than the. It's been ten seconds. <laughs> Yeah. And still, 
nothing of value was lost. False Promise is going to be back up. Already time lapse is back up, and they can just run at it again. I don't know how you end this game. It's just so hard. Like obviously Empire had been really fight. close. Like I would say, like six or seven times, they've been really close to killing an important hero without buyback. But IG Vitality, they keep like throwing their import, uh, sorry, their uh, buyback heroes out in front, rather. And Dogfights and Super have just been playing with the utmost consistency, saving these heroes that are on the verge of just losing the game if they die. And the thing is, Empire have just been trying so many different ways to tackle the base, too. That's a cool thing. They're not just, like, throwing their bodies into T4 with BKBs. They're trying to shadow Blade in from the side lanes. They've been BOTing in with two BOTs and BKBing right-clicking the towers. They've been trying to, like, blink initiate all on one hero while keeping the defensive heroes occupied. They've just been doing everything, and still IG and Vitality have pulled steadfast. And it's really impressive, too. We are starting to see as well the gem purchase and trying to take down these uh, illusion, or rather the sentry wards that are already there, and they've caught themselves in dogfights, but he is going to jump away. A great hook shot again! Somehow, Ghostick made the play, but they still get the time lapse off and are going to be able to kill off Ghostick. He has buyback, 98 seconds, and they also saved the gem. Up here, dogfights is actually the most important hero. Viper, they've caught him for the moment, but they forced the buyback of the Clockwork. Clockwork trying to TP in. He's up in the top lane, but not in range of anything to happen. Dogfights is still pretty low. He's at half HP right now. They hexed him. They've caught him. Viper FN out of mana. But they're able to walk away yet again. They still have false promise, too. Yeah. It's just cool down from Roger. Yeah, so Dogfights is the most important hero, I think, kill on IGV. He can save everyone else, but it's very difficult for him to save himself. They have to false promise and time lapse on him so he doesn't die if jumped. Oh my god, staring out of cell, 87 minutes in. I mean, this is game two, and this is, is this still our first series? <laughs> this game has been going on forever. IGV not willing to give up, never surrender. And they're putting themselves in a position to win the game. I believe Aegis number six, maybe? I mean, look at just look at this T4 defense. It's two mega creeps and the Injuli in Carapace form. That's already scary enough as is. And they're still waiting until the buybacks cool down. Drow Ranger still doesn't have two minutes, but it's mostly dogfights right now. Dogfights. He has the most pressure in the game because he can't die and he has to save anyone else that gets jumped. Jeez. Even more so than uh, actually Oracle has. Oracle only has to save dogfights. Yeah. So. It's not so bad. It's not so bad. Yeah, he's fine. I'm sure he's, you know, just having a great time. Relaxing in this game. It's easy. <laughs> uh, Resolution ended up going back for the Diffusal Blade. We've seen a good amount of these so far. Um, this is the pop that Link. Okay. He wants to be able to blink, wow. instantly pop Lincolns, abyssal them, and kill them before they can respond. The, uh, IG finds out they have had abnormally quick reactions when it comes to all these Abilities, but they're getting to the point where the damage they can kill people in a second and if you can't really act in a second like you can just keep trying like maybe you only have like a 95% success rate but that one time out of 20 if you fail to do it by like 0 0.2 0 0.3 seconds you're gonna lose the game so I resolution is constantly trying to put them in the they have to make the move they have to make the right move they have to be quick enough they have to be in range they have to not misclick too like, yeah. imagine if someone misclick like a time lapse or something. Oh, like, that God. thing is targeted now yeah no, for sure. Man, that is nuts. And yeah. it, we did see level 25s now on everybody in this game. 250 cast range for the Oracle. It was the four charges of Cold Feet for the Ancient Apparition. So, base defense is going to continue. Tower regeneration on Tier 4 towers. 90 minutes in. 90 minute mark. They're pausing for a okay, little... When does the apocalypse start happening? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, has it not yet? The, this is the little, the you know... Uh, what is it? The wake for the 89-minute guessers for predictions. Oh, let me see what I put. I think I put 80 to 80. <laughs> I don't think I put 90. I'm pretty sure I didn't put 90. Yeah, I don't know if I did it either. Uh, well, I did put Anti-Mage with Tito with most last in the game, but that's looking nicely done. I put 80 to 89. So. Well, it's like at least 90 plus. We don't even know what it's going to be now at this point. 
Well, they do take a short break here. Um, obviously, want to make sure that these players are continuing to play at the highest level possible. Uh, fatigue always starts to set in from time to time, but I uh, wanted to make sure that it is all fine and dandy. They had to go to the bathroom. Uh, it's super sane. So, it's a good excuse. Yeah, that's completely... So next couple of minutes here, we've seen time and again them not really, like you said, throwing bodies at it, but taking a lot of different paths for trying to end the game on Empire. I think they've, they've really tackled them all, and none have worked. <laughs> Due to the good play of IGV. They right. they tried them all. I, I, would say like I, uh, I would say that Empire have been very good at pressuring IGV and just putting them to test every single way that they could possibly think of they've been doing. Right. Like, they've been... They've been smoking from the low ground. They pop observer wars on high ground. They like blink in and initiate. I mean, they've really done anything. What what have they not tried? I guess maybe I'm trying to think of anything they haven't tried yet that they could feasibly try. I, I guess mean, Necro Book Siege. That's not really that's not really a thing. This like well, so uh, yeah. anything else? I mean, like Necro Books, and then like everybody pops BKBs and focus one tower. But then if you all end up dying for it, does that yeah. even become worth it's it? It's not risk. It. It's not, it's not worth it. Those are the Low reward. I mean, I guess the reward is winning the game, but I, I think your chance of success is so low, and your risk is incredibly high. They've been going for a lot of like low risk, medium reward, which is I think where you want to be as Empire. You have megas. So you're you're happy, with that, but you're not happy with AM going to a 90 minute game. Brutal, savage. Yeah, okay, here we go. So. One thing that was good about this pause is that the teams aren't close to each other, so they can get a few minutes to reset, get back in the mentality. Okay, oh, what do I need to do? Okay, they're going to go on dogfights. That's going to be IG Vitality's mentality. We need to position around dogfights. Empire have been like, okay, that we need to kill dogfights because he's been the big baller with the time lapse that's been super low. We can't kill anyone. Also, what else can they do? They also need a sight. They need a sight so they can kill the Weaver. Or, sorry, kill the Mix. The Mix has been yielding himself during a lot of the burst, and they still have no sign, and no one can really buy one at the moment. Yeah, 6,000. Huh, that's surprising. You bought, like, Moon Charge for everyone? Clockwork has a Moon Charge, so that's a yes. <laughs> <laughs> they literally, uh, H Apparition doesn't have one, and neither does the Rubik. But Rubik does have a BKB in his backpack. Jeez. And he has four rapiers queued up as well, so he's ready to go. Um... <laughs> Uh, surprise! We haven't seen any rapiers in this game. All right, tenth item for anti major. Is this the eleventh? I'm not sure. He has a heart as well. Oh my goodness! What did he sell? Battlefield. Yeah. Oh wait, no, Battlefield is still there. Boots. Well, I don't even know. Scotty. Scotty. And now he's swapping out the Battle Fury for the Silver Edge, and wants to go in. The other side of this is that right now buyback. Everybody has it on IG Vitality. The only person that doesn't is Ghostic. So, conceivably, we could live in a world where IG Vitality can push out the lanes again and try and take Tier 4s. I would say Ghostic is much less important to his team, though, than anyone else on IG Vitality. Right. Like, I think if... Uh, who's the least important person on IG Vitality? Probably... You can't even say... It's super, maybe? The Ninja Lai? Dogfights and Sakata the Paparazzi? But if, if Super dies, then Dogfights will die. If Dogfights die, his whole team will die. So everyone is everyone is necessary on Vitality Wars Ghosting. They can still do a fair amount of damage to Viper and any team can just get off and post their game. Just resolution just kinda of waiting for the perfect rune. Time to wait. Yeah. Checking every two minutes for the last thirty. It looks like they also have Aegis for one more minute here. Um Lord. Yeah. I mean that's the thing is like even if you do get Aegis at this point. Like, you start stacking cheeses, I guess, and that's the way that you try and take it? It seems so inconceivable that this game is going to end by, like, anything other than a one team fight. but I don't know how Empire really wins a, a team fight when Dogfights has been able to play this elusively. It's been close. I'm telling you, it's been, like, yeah. super close. It's been, like, you know, if someone was 10% slower or Empire were 10% faster, then this game would be over already a long time ago. So it's, it's at that point where it's just a true test of skills. Guys, okay. healing the freaking <laughs> <egg. laughs> uh, He's just got it going. He's ready to go. And the Viper here built into a Mjolnir next. I uh, will have that shortly. It just feels like they're 
redefining their heroes and what they need to do, like filling a different role. And that's a four cold feed. Is everyone level 25 yet? Yes, yes. everyone is level 25. Okay. Everybody is level 25. Um, there's still room to grow. Like, Maposhka doesn't have an Aghanim Scepter. That could be something else because then False Promise no longer will be able to heal these people inside a fountain because it oh, doesn't yeah. last long. That enough. actually, that's a really important point. It doesn't. That. I guess they can time up. Right. It at least takes away something. Yeah, you know? I think. I think you just straight sell your glimmer. Yeah, Scepter would actually probably be GG. Brutal, <laughs> savage, rage. It also is really uh, problematic for a hero like Nyx. Nyx says, if you can't regen inside the burrow, you're screwed. Yeah. I, I I mean, you can understand why each of these items was picked. Like, four staff, he needs positioning. Lotus Orb, obviously, to deal with the sheep sticks. Glimmer Cape, they needed to be able to have more of these things to save them. Look at these wards. There are, like, eight sentry wards outside IG Vitality Base, and there's three, like... Th this is the thing that a lot of newer players will just not do is just play Sentry Wards outside of your base. You, that's absolutely necessary. If they have an Observer Wards just sitting up there, they'll get the jump, they'll kill you, they'll win. Like, having three or four Sentry Wards inside your base at all times for the remainder of the game is... is... it's absolutely integral. I, I would say it's almost more important than getting like a big item. On the it's not as important as having buyback, but it's up there in terms of uh, Paramount priority. And a couple other big items now. MKB was picked up by Anti-Mage, another item for him in this slew of items that he's been holding on to. And Sakata has a Rapier on the Courier. MKB, what? I don't know, man. Okay, Draw Ranger's hitting for 850. He was. This is insanity. And he's so slow, though. <laughs> 290. <laughs> oh. DD bottom? I still don't know, though, if they're really going to try and go for this. Like, Roche is going to respawn potentially in 50 seconds, probably a little bit later than that. But I don't even know if, like, Aegis and Cheese matters anymore, because it's not like you can throw your bodies at him, because IGB can probably kill you twice. Yeah. Let's try. Yeah, I, their, their death timers are so long right now, though, because everyone's 25 that you can't actually make a super skip All right, Maposhka Ags is coming on the Courier. Okay, that's... That could be the game winner. It sounds stupid that 96 minutes into the Ags, AA might change the game, or will change the game, but I think it's, it's going to change the game. I think it's... they will die, because Fault Promise is important. But who will die first is the other question to ask. Buybacks are still available. It's only so long that that cooldown, it's 40 seconds. Probably in July. I think in July is good. Okay. He's just going to be the side casualty, because no one's going to Oh, that I do by Tally. On his invokers, mana pool really changed that much. It's still sitting at about 3,000. We've talked about that spike carapace. So if the anti-mage does happen to mana void paparazzi nearby uh, in July, he could just blow himself up still. That would be... Yeah. That'd be the coolest thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. And Maposhka, they're just content to keep on farming. Like, I, I mean, what is... I guess that they don't want to do it until the buyback is back up again, but they have buyback again. Maybe they want to have buyback for Ancient Apparition as well. They're just at a loss at how to approach. Again, they've exhausted almost every single possibility that they could have gone. Yeah. So they're not really sure what to do right now. I mean, they can just actually just physically take their hands off the keyboard and think, okay, how do we actually tackle this? But I don't actually think there's a good solution. Yeah. Like there's... In July has been in Burrow form for like eight minutes. He <laughs> <laughs> just has not left. <laughs> this is my home now. Yeah. He should maybe move a little bit so it's more line with the world. Must trigger some OCD people. Yeah, that's the uh That's the new strat. Make yourself look cool. Y'all load that load it up. Oh look, he moved out! He's heading out of there. But they have sentries and observers everywhere, so they immediately spot him out. They do. Oh wait, no, the gem. Okay. They do ward, so that's not... Yeah, they will spot out that it in July is out and about though. So How much are these bounty so... runes worth? That's a good question. Ninety-eight minutes in. Let's find out. Two hundred and forty-six. That's pretty good. That doesn't sound as much as I thought it would be. Yeah. That's fair. 
I guess it's like, eh, that's, that's a lot. I, I want to see how much armor Roche has, too. There's a lot of things that start to get really nuts when you get towards the 100 minute mark. And I mean, <sighs> this game has just been, it's showing how good it can be if you hold high ground. And this lineup is built perfectly for it. Affirm. <laughs> FN agrees with me. Okay, Roche respawning now. Finally, when this goes down, it might be time for Empire to make the move yet again. But we've seen this story. We've read this book. It's happened time and again. And even still, they haven't always been able to finish it off. 47 armor on Roche. 16,000 HP. Resolution doesn't care. God, look at this. MKB bashes. Roche really being bullied around here. This reminds me of like the X Hero Siege from Warcraft 3 days. Did you ever play those? No. It's like you just get oh. super. Oh, Mapushka. He's getting found. He's being caught. Uh, they do have Gem on Nyx as well. They're going to be able to run into him. Although, that being said, Super is over on the other side here, and he could get counted out by the anti mage. They're fighting outside their base. I don't know if really this is the play that they wanted to go for. Sakata is going to be able to hop out, but Dogfight's caught. We've seen this again. He's going to be killed off in July now. Also in a little bit of trouble. They immediately buy back onto Dogfights, and in July, trying to jump away. Is he going to be able to live through all of that damage that came through towards him? No. They have buyback on the Knicks, and they might just need to use it. This could be the beginning of the ruination by GV. Also, Clockwork with that Moonshard just soloed the Weaver. He hit so hard. That's insane. Yep. I was looking at it. Drow Ranger doesn't have a Moonshard yet. Yeah, was he even able to attack that fight? I don't even know. I'm trying to hold the Knicks buyback. Wait for them to make a move. Commit. Make them overcommit. Get rid of the Empire buybacks. Oh, uh, all right. They found a big one. There's the buyback from the Knicks. Time lapse, keeping Sakata alive. But now they found themselves another one. Oracle controlled for the moment. Can they kill him off? Anti Mage is already dead. Now an opening approaches. They're trying to run down and kill off the Rubik. He's going to go down as well in FN. Trying to also make the escape, but so much control, so much damage coming out. They're destroying Mapochka as well. Dogfight's able to find him, and Ghostic trying to save his buddy. He soloed him before. Can the Weaver get out of here? He's in a ton of trouble. Starting to drop low. He is going to die. No buyback, and Ghostic finally going to fall. The Aegis is coming back. FN is going to be ran at. Sakata dealing a good bit of damage, trying to stay alive, and that Satanic is going to do enough to keep him up and alive. FN falls. Four and five dead from Empire. Rezo got destroyed. He died in half the ration of a Hex, I think, with, due to the Draw Ranger actually finally being able to right-click him. Now he's going to have to hook it down mid. So let's see. Weaver died, doesn't have buyback. I think they might want to like time their push so that they can force the buyback on Empire and Weaver will be able to respawn in time. Not too sure. I mean, at, at this point, do you really have a game plan? <laughs> Can you really <laughs> prepare for what is happening next? I don't know. It seems impossible. Oracle just picked up a Maelstrom as well. Oh, they are going to get that Tier 2 tower, though. Oh, yeah. I forgot they could just backdoor it because it's 100 minutes in and they can do whatever they want. <laughs> Creeps mean nothing. Towers are no problem. Well, 50 seconds before Weaver is up and Empire, they don't want to try and go for this yet. Understandably. <laughs> Quick, pop your precision R, Sakata. Get the arcane rune value. Oh, I believe in it. They do also have a haste and a DD that have spawned. Oh, come on, press it, please. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. The small victories. All right. Here it is. DD rune. But what do you do with this? Not much. I mean, it's percentage-wise increase is not that much. Because she was sitting at, like, what, like 750. Oh, she's at 1,000. A thousand. Like just a thousand. Just a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 102 minutes in. Another Mjolnir picked up. This time it's by the Invoker. They got around a 6,000 gold lead change in that last engagement. Gold and means nothing here, Gabe. I know. It really gold doesn't. Gold is useless here. Anti Mage was at like 60,000 like 30 minutes ago, and now he's dropped to 56,000. They're just numbers that mean nothing.
It's gibberish right now. Net worth is just a number. Relevant. Okay, DD wearing off for Sakata. Uh, we do have Weaver back up. Buyback status. Clockwork does not have it. Ancient Apparition does not have it. And then Nyx, Weaver, and Oracle. Actually, Oracle just got buyback, but Nyx and Weaver do not. Kill Weaver, win game. We thought that before as well. Hasn't always ended up working out. Sakata is very far out in this bottom lane. Does not have Hurricane Pike off cooldown. Just used it right there. Super. Just gonna punch resolution. <laughs> Purifying flames for funsies. Look at all of them huddled together. Paparazzi. I mean, they walk forward. They get the break and pulling back in. That's resolution controlled. Ghost Dick has found super though. Starting to bring them low and they have killed off resolution. 90 seconds, double deafening blast, controlling, killing off the Rubik as well. IVG striding forward and taking down FN. That's two times in a row now where they've been able to kill off multiples from Empire. This Hex is a big problem. Anti-Mage wasn't able to pop his BKB, didn't get Lotus Orb, didn't get Force Evan, just died again to the Drive I think this could be, this could be the beginning of the buybacks. This time they didn't lose that all-important Weaver, like you said, and, and the and the next. And the next, yeah, they're pushing down each of these lanes. And with bots level two, as soon as you get the creeps into the tower bottom or mid, you can just yeah. head top. Do you want to go for Megas here or T4? I guess you have enough time to go for the T3s. Or sorry, do you go for Megas or T3s? Yeah, Megas. Oh, bottom lane? No, here. They're going to be able to open up already at the start. Sakata, he ends up getting cooked. They don't have a Hurricane Pike up on him, but they will be able to force out with another. That's a long duration, though. Looks like they're able to force out the buybacks, not resolutions. Now the buybacks have turned. This game is insanity. 105 minutes. And while it feels like we've been on the brink of elimination for this entire time. Yeah, you still don't know who's going At all. And I... I I mean, yeah, so this is my tower now. <laughs> I lo I lo look at that T4 tower. <laughs> Mega Creep just like, I own this. <laughs> Get out of here. The gatekeepers. God. Uh, I, what's the timer for when creeps are equal to Mega Creeps? Well, it's clearly not now. Yeah. They're still not big enough. 700 HP versus 1200. It's getting closer. Yeah, it's, we're getting there. And look at the ancient apparition. This is my life now. 12 centuries and just throwing them everywhere. Wow. Brutal, savage, wrecked. Yeah. <laughs> Oracle stash? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay, that's the most ridiculous stash I've ever seen. All right. That has to be, like, the game has to go on for so long to actually have that many in your, in your stash. That is great. That is beautiful. One from Roger, one from Paparazzi, one from Rezo, one from Roger, one from Resolution. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The game has to be going on... Well, I guess if you're there for multiple sites, it doesn't... Still. I mean, how many gems are on the ground, too? I guess... Yeah, I'm not seeing any I either. see two Helmet Dominators. Base and IGP. Oh, my God. This game... Yeah, and Oracle, he's going to be having a Mjolnir as well in a short period of time. Um, one thing to notice is that the Weaver was kind of switching on and off between having his Aghanims in his stash or not. He was uh, using other items. Oh, he needs that axe. Yeah. That axe has been the saving grace for the 40 to 80 minute phase of the game. You know, I was looking at this game and I was like, ah, it's a Drow Ranger stat. They got off to a good start. Invoker got a double kill at the start of it. This game will be over real quickly. Now we got another Divine Rapier picked up, 107 minutes in. Only two Rapiers at this point. I mean, I, I, that's the thing too, though, is it, it doesn't really feel like it's... it's what ever, else do you buy? Yeah. Like, more Helma Dominators? You can't get more than five on a team, though, and get more than five creeps. That was the change that they made. I think it was after that, like, Drag Neil game at the Manila Mage Masters a while ago, or Major. Relevant change. Yeah. See? Freaking Oracle's had those Sentry Wards, like, Clockwork, right outside his base for all time. Now he has five. He's upgraded. 
No ward yeah, that is safe from Super. Dotting their eyes and <laughs> Look crossing at their Viper keys. Slow. Oh, okay, after he finishes PK, watch him float across. <laughs> He's like a freaking alien mothership just <laughs> sailing across. He's so slow. <laughs> oh, FN. Time to buy drums to increase everyone's move speed? Maybe. Pop drums, backpack it. Oh, BKB backpack. Is it worth it to get drums? Uh, might be. No one has boots, so that move speed increases. <laughs> Kind of important here. Oops, exit. Uh oh. This click. Hopefully, these players don't misclick. <laughs> CC at this point would be tragic. But it really does feel like, too, you know, looking at the way that the game progressed, we're not in a position where Empire feel confident, like, in anywhere near the base right now. Before, they were all staying outside. I think there was a moment where Anti Mage was, like, up on the high ground. And it, it feels like the momentum has turned where IGV just haven't lost a fight in a really long time. Roshan number 18 has fallen. She's just left on the ground. Who cares, right? <laughs> There's a gem in there, No one too. has room for it. There's another gem that was left in there also. So that gem was left in there by Resolution. So Rezo's bought at least three gems this game. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. How many, who has Moomin Shards? Does everyone have Moomin Shards now? We still haven't even gotten to that point where everyone has Moomin Shards. Oh, now there's an Alpha Wolf creep. Damn. Oh, hey. Hey, they're progressing, man. That's pretty great. The Gatekeeper melee creep is still there. In case you guys were wondering. Sakata has his trusty Alpha Wolf. That's pretty nice for him as well. They, I, would you prefer a Kobold creep or an Alpha Wolf? What does the Kobold do? It gives you the moose. I think moose speed, because then you could drop your boots for a huge damage item. Right. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't actually think they have the choice, because they, they still have to kill the thing. Wow. Is the swiftness orb, uh, aura better than the kobold aura, though? Yeah, but you don't have to have a slot for it. Kobold. But I mean, from oh, the... One's percent based, one's flat based. Okay, it's 12% it. versus 20. There is a foreman. I see you, foreman. I'm here, buddy. It's over there. I can't see where you're pinging. It's but. bottom, bottom radiant. Yeah, they'll be able yeah. to get there, I'm sure, if they want it. <laughs> I don't know if they want it. I, I, I would, I'd, I'd say go for it. That thing's great. Yeah. Twelve percent move speed. Why not? You, Affirmative, dude. You're gonna be like twice the speed of the Viper. So he's at four fifty nine on Paparazzi uh, with Max Wex. So you're putting him at like five hundred plus. Oh, yeah, you're putting him at like five hundred plus. Can the Kobold keep up at that point though? Yeah, that's okay. a Helmet's Alcreep. It's gonna be super fast. All oh, right, all right, that's fair enough. Yeah, and then Vipers at. Oh wait, he 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 couldn't take it anymore. He couldn't take the slow line. Now he actually looks like he can fly. Instead of but he has to switch it off with the MKB too. And I know. But he, he was tired of it, man. <laughs> that that is very <laughs> tilting. Okay, when you're two hours into the game and he has to run around slower than you were at the very start of the game, or equal to zero minutes into the game. You know, I don't know if that's the only thing that's tilting about this game for Empire. Dude, that, that is one of the most tilting things. Okay. Uh, he's like, you, you think about it, you're like, ah, I don't really need boots. I want an MKB. And then you try it out, you're like, okay, I can't take this. I'm, I'm, I'm tilted. I'm triggered. I can't take this. <laughs> yeah, that is, it's awful. You're, you feel like Crystal Maiden. And I, then you can't even attack anyone because you can't move around. And so. they're all just going to kite you around. They got four staffs and hurricane pikes. You're up against a Weaver with the plus 200 Sakuchi movement. All right, I'm yeah. with you. Yeah, dude. Okay. Let's How many see. items now is this for resolution? He bought a satanic as well. He's just uh. standing still. He, he, he's trying to figure out what the heck to do. A DD bot or top rather. There's an illusion room bottom. Dude, your fantasy points have to be out of control in this game. I know, it really does. I had Ghost Stick on my fantasy team. I, I think, think I had Paparazzi. He has 44 points. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty what you, nuts. What, what do you get him from? Let's, I mean, what? I guess runes grabbed? You probably have like, how many bounty runes? I have no idea. I can't even imagine. Oh, I guess it's simple as that. Times four, rough. But. Okay. So some of them skirted by, unpicked up. A third rapier purchase, this time for the anti mage. Which means he swapped out the Battle Fury and the Manta. He has he BKB for defensive items right now. He actually just dies. Yeah, that's a five thing. second BKB. And it's not like they have Aether Lens for cast range. Like Ancient Apparition, the Lotus Orb cast range is pretty low. Yeah. Especially in the anti-mage who has to bleak into the fight. So, yeah, he has Rapier. 
So do few other heroes. <laughs> That's not cool anymore. That was so 20 minutes ago. Yeah, okay. so <laughs> There's a new meta evolving inside this own individual game. Yeah. You're a hipster if you don't go rave here. That's right. So here's the other thing. Keep in mind, everybody, this game, I, we talked about at the beginning, but that was so long ago at this point. The winner of this is going to be in a much better position to try and challenge for TNC to get into the upper bracket matchup. Right now, Team Empire is sitting at five and or six and seven, and IGB is sitting at five and six. So if they're able to win it, then it would end up being even on par, and uh, Empire would be caught up with them finally. But if they don't, it's going to be really hard for them to push out either IGB or TNC for their spot in the upper bracket at TI. And still, it just <laughs> there's just nothing. Wow. Refresher orbs. Ugh. We have gotten to the point of multiple chickens. Only two now. One is loaded with the gems. They probably didn't want to bug super. Hey, give me that gem for your stash. Now you hoard your secret stash, underground stash of gems. It's peddling gems now. So when is that point where they do go for like the BKB rush of the they, towers? They don't. They can't do they it can't ever. Do it anymore. They 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 died trying to fight them. Okay. Yeah. So imagine them not fighting them and just tanking the damage. They would just die. They would just get five zeros like so fast. <laughs> it's because of the T4 defense though. Like if right. they didn't have T4s, I think it's a realistic possibility if the glyph is down, mm -hmm. or you can like bait out the glyph with like ages maybe. Go for it. But, but Ermo, back when they got Megas, yeah. and I said the good thing about it is that they only have to worry about a T4. That was being serious. Like, yeah. You you actually, it's so much easier to defend when you're right here and you have region on both of them. And like in July, he's still in his little burrow form. This is his home now. He has this like little tiny block of habitation where he's just burrowed out. And I'm surprised it hasn't collapsed yet with the ground he's dug up. I mean, the other thing here too is like, he's going to get disconnected from match in activity pretty soon. The waves have been pushed out almost enough. He's not getting a ton of experience. <laughs> wow, what if that happened in the lobby games? That'd be so sick. <laughs> IGV in July has abandoned the game. <laughs> you are free to leave. <laughs> Alright, look, he's standing on the, the thing now. He's not quite lined up perfectly, but it's okay, pretty close. Come on, dude, get up, man. Get up. Get out of there. Alright, what do they need to pause for now? A little bit of a, a huddle session. Talk about what the game plan is. There is no game plan. That's the thing. It's like, it's it, it, the Roshan doesn't matter. Aegis doesn't matter. Buybacks do matter. Items, like pretty much everyone has their pick of five items, let's say. Or six items. Five being, I don't know. Even, there's so many, how many heroes have gems right now? Brutal, God, savage, dude, this is the most. This is like the high roller <laughs> game. Look, you pull on the item charge, just bring everyone at BOTs and rapiers, like all the like six thousand gold items. This is definitely the high rollers game, man. Yeah, some of Empire is still on that bots level too, but it's all those lower net worth heroes. Plebs, bots you know, too. We do well, have uh, the halberd on on clockwork. You know, those that th type of item, I feel like that would be much better to start smashing out. I guess that there's still so much what? damage from Invoker, too. Disarm? Disarm's good, man. Yeah? It's a kind of hit for like a thousand. Yeah. A hit. If he if he gets, gets a disarm on Sakata while they have Resolution Hexed, that's better than a Lotus Orb. Oh, not bad. It's, 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 yeah, it's almost better than Lotus Orb, because he actually just sit there and attack. It's still really good. And it's five seconds on the ranged hero as well, so it's like, a, I mean, the fights are over in less than five seconds There's now. a Blade Mail, too, on Ghostic. Not that it matters that much, because there is a Satanic on Drow Ranger. Right. But it's just, it still forces him to keep the Satanic. The Halberd kind of forces him, or at least makes him reconsider dropping the MK. Um, Resolution, yeah, who knows what he... Battle Fury's in his stash now. But this is the thing that I keep on thinking about, is as the game goes on, there is no incentive for IGB to ever leave their base, really, because they, well, they only to want win. to fight there. Right, but that's the thing, is they want to win. <laughs> but, like, how do you get to the... Are you ever going to be able to push out a lane, really? Yeah, they have precision aura. And they, okay. all, they can also get to the point in the game where the creeps are equal to the mega creeps. But they only have one lane of that, too. What? Because they have... Oh, you're right. The super creeps, yeah, of course. The yeah. super creeps will be equal to the mega creeps. And then right. they have the range creep aura. So they actually don't have to be there. I, I would say they have the edge going, like, if we, by some stroke of luck, got four hours in, then I think IG, I would much prefer to be on IG Vitality side because Drow aura. Drow aura is sick. 
that situation. Like, creeps can just solo the throne and T4s easily, right? Especially if you have a Helmet Dominator army. And then looking at the rest of Team Empire here, uh, they're not itemized in a way to deal with a Mega Creep situation or Super Creeps that end up being stronger or equal to Megas. I mean, what would you actually realistically change out, though? I mean, maybe, well, it, for instance, Oracle has a Maelstrom, whereas, oh, like, yeah, Clockwork has, like, one. team fight winning items, you know? Yeah. So, like, they might even need to start thinking about switching that back around. <laughs> oh, He's got man. good attack. Didn't, remember back in the day, he used to play in mid a lot, because he had, like, a really low uh, base attack time, and, you know, he could farm pretty well. Okay, we see more and more Helmet Dominator. Now, Dogfight has one. Dogfight has one, Injulai has one, Sakata has one. Where's the third creep, bro? Where's that gatekeeper? Okay, wait, now it's Brutal, savage, wrecked. This is the best part about these additions, is when the game goes late, you can see the descent into madness from all of the teams as the game just gets later and later. Is it the two-hour mark that the terrain just starts exploding? I think it's hero-dependent, like oh. ones with a lot of particle effects. So maybe with, like, you Over. know, Octarine Coin and uh, Octarine Coin and Broker and stuff, it will. Okay, come on, Paparazzi. Use your Refresher Orb and cast all nine <laughs> spells just for us. You know, I was thinking about this. The next level bait, IGV accidentally, in quotation marks, hit their uh, their key for um, fortification, gets Empire to run in, they kill them all. What do you think? I Is that think the strat? They, they haven't had use glyph for the past line. So yeah, that's true. It would be a good bait. You team in. Oh, that was a bait. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, why not? I mean, use it or lose it, right? Who was that? That was Anti Mage. Well, Anti Mage has 11 items. Nine yeah. plus Abyssal and Stash plus Amusia. Wow, the point where you drop your Abyssal, that is something else. That's pretty nuts. Of all the items, I never thought that he would drop his Abyssal. Did Oracle? Oracle did get the GPM talent too. Thank so, God. God, so much regret if you didn't take that. <laughs> That'd be the biggest regret of your TI, yeah. right there, not taking the GPM talent in this game. The 30 health regen on Maposhka is pretty good too, because it's allowed him to farm up more than he was before. And he actually has a Halberd now as well. So two Halberds on Empire. Yeah, Drow Ranger might have to get BKB or Man pre Manta. Yeah. Pre Invoker does a lot of damage too. Weaver does a lot of damage. So as long as Drow's still alive, it's not the worst thing in the world that he gets disarmed for 10 seconds. Paparazzi has that meal there also. But it's a refresher Viper. I don't know how many of these have been played in. What do you even refresh? Dota. Oh, your bots? Your BKB? He doesn't even have either of them in his inventory. What would you try? Viper strike? Yeah. <laughs> Poison attack. Nice. <laughs> the value. <laughs> <laughs> the value. All right. Wow. Brutal. Well, we are reaching the two hour mark now of game number two, Team Empire versus IG Vitality. And every little thing matters. But it's kind of interesting too, because like even the ice, we thought that the ice blast would matter, but dogfights can just time lapse and they still win the fight regardless. So a second rapier now picked up for the anti-mage also. <laughs> He's one in the set. I didn't even He's, know. He you put two of them in him now. Okay. So he still doesn't even hit close as hard as the draft. Oh no, he, he put the other one on the ground? What's he doing? Is he gonna deny it? No. Is he fed up? Courier's gonna try and pick it up. Okay. Okay, watch this Courier. Oh, Resolution. Clearly does has not subscribed to the Book of Football. After you, someone picks up the Rapier, you can't pick it up. Ah, uh -huh. but I, I don't think he's been in that many Rapier situations before where you actually aren't gonna pick it up. If you bite on a courier, you can, you can, it can stay on the courier. But if you drop it, courier can't pick it. And it is now in the fountain, chilling. So, oh yeah, Roshan, you're going down, buddy. Now up to uh, what is that? Hit the armor, but it still ends up falling too quickly. They've changed out the bloodthorn long ago for FN. Uh, Roshan down and. Aegis on Clockwork yet again. Ghost to Cable to jump. Jeez, it's like, uh, who cares? All right, it's been a while since everybody has seen the fights happen in this game, so you try oh, okay. to refresh oh, us yeah, on yeah. what we're looking at. Yeah, we probably have a lot of newcomers because it's been this game has been going on for ages. So, IG Vitality had a pretty good early game. Drow Ranger 
strat. Uh, they took down a couple of T1s. Invoker got a double kill, and Dogfight's got a chicken kill during the game. So Invoker was 2-0 to start. They had a couple thousand net worth lead, but all things went poorly for them as soon as they started to push down the mid T1 on bottom. Invoker was able to drag the creep wave away, stop the push, and that tower stayed alive for about another 10 minutes and halted all of ID and Vitality's momentum as they tried to push while Paparazzi was farming with his Midas. After that, Anti-Mage got his Battle Fury at a pretty decent time. I believe it was on around 15 minutes time. And then Anti-Mage started doing what you would expect an Anti-Mage to do, but push out all the lanes and just put too much pressure on IG Vitality to ever actually push up the high ground. And then move into the next phase of the game where there's just a bunch of farming for both teams. Gets a Manta style, gets a Butterfly, and then starts owning the crap out of IG Vitality. Wow. Gets the Aegis, Brutal. and then Savage. they start sieging the racks. The fights go Empire's way, but the buildings are another story. And after much determination, Empire take down the majority of the T3s and the T, uh, majority of the T3s and the ranged and melee racks out on top. However, that wasn't the end of it. They were desperate to finish off the last two set of racks, but it probably took them another 10 minutes to do so, and only after an age of sacrifice from anti Mage, he pushed the right racks, baited them all to go over there while FM sieged the mid racks, he sacrificed the Aegis, and then as soon as they switched over to Viper, he got Megas on the right side, but that was, I don't even know where they got Megas, maybe 50 minutes in? Was it later than that, 60 minutes? It was around there, 50 or 60 minutes in, but jokes on them, because IG Vitality were like, oh wow, well, now we have less buildings to defend, even better. We don't have to spread ourselves thin, which actually matters because Injuli has been part of this mission probably for a good 40 minutes of the game. Right in between those uh, two lovely towers in the T4, and he has just been sitting there as the eternal sentinel guardian of dire T4 towers. And Empire have just been throwing everything. Just like this, as they're going to hook shot in, but in a little bit of trouble in Ancient Apparition, starting to drop low again. The Deafening Blast comes out. Ghost Stick still just beating away at Sakata, but they're able to turn it back around again. Ghost Stick is going to fall. That's only the Aegis. If any of you guys were wondering why it is Merlini goes to every event, it's because he has a lock trap tight memory. My goodness gracious, I can't believe you remembered all that. Holy shit. I'm not even done, bro. I know, that's what's nuts. <laughs> okay, and then. After the Megas started happening, Empire tried all these tactics to tackle their base. Uh, Rezo bought a, sil uh, a Shadow Blade into a Silver Edge. They tried to all smoke up the high ground, pick off these heroes that didn't have buybacks, and then IG Vitality had this... What is going on? They're, they're actually fighting. taking it down, but I don't think they're able to do it. Uh, this could be the end. Time lapse. Wait, there's still two, two heroes with buybacks. Oh, yeah. Rezo's, Rezo got crushed. I think another big kill. The thing is, the Aegis doesn't really matter, so they actually decided to push with the Aegis. Oh, ooh, ooh. Dogfight's almost got really scared. Yeah. A now upgrade. they have to defend their base. Okay, so after that, Empire tried everything. They tried going in on a Booker, he would get time lapse. They tried going in on the Oracle, he would get time lapse. They tried going in on the Weaver, and then Weaver got False Promise into a time lapse. And they tried killing Injuli, and then Injuli constantly yields himself because they didn't have a Hex on Empire. And then, eventually, Empire gave up pushing. And they're like, okay, we'll, we'll just farm, get all those six slots. However, Anti-Mage has had like 10 different items, two rapiers, and still he hasn't been able to right-click people at all because Drow Ranger has been hitting like an absolute truck. Now he has DD running down mid. Let's get that Rezo buyback out of here. Let's see if they can actually make it happen. He does so much freaking damage. And they passed by a second ago. They do manage to find that Hex from very long range from Roger. So he just jumped back, but with DD here, with Sakata starting to hit, they, they might be able to do this. Oh, they aren't going to buy back on AM. They are just conceding. Oh, oh, buyback now comes a little bit late, but they're able to push back onto one again. Roger catches it. That's Divine Rapier down and Drow Ranger dead. Now they've been able to find themselves another pickoff as Nyx Assassin controlled and killed. They don't even sacrifice Megas for that. Only the Tier 3 tower and the melee barracks. Oof, they actually need the Drow Ranger alive. She did pop her Precision Aura, but I... They can do the same thing and force buybacks out. So how many people don't have buybacks? Just Viper and AM. That's, I would say, roughly equivalent to Drow and Nyx. But the thing that, that, that we talked about, too, is that IG Vitality, they need everybody to yeah, be able they to need hold. Yeah, they need all five of them, for sure. Drow, Invoker for damage, Nyx for the control. He stuns anyone that doesn't have BKB trying to go for the towers or for the heroes. And then Weaver and Oracle both do a... <laughs> 
do the, do a ton of saving. Oracle has the rapier now as well. Wow. Okay. He, he does have one of the lowest base attack times in the game. Yeah. Value right there. He's gonna do uh, actually like a decent amount of damage. He needs to be so careful. Okay. They're smoking in right here actually. So he. Oh. He has a moment. Okay. Wait. He has 30 centuries. Was about to say. I was about to say that he had a moment of uh, lapse in his, his uh, century around the base. God, they need to be so careful though. Like uh, any time, if they happen to jump forward, that BKB actually pops from Roger is kind of important. They still have <laughs> buy back there. One of the four, I think he just was like, ah, oh, might as well use it. Oh, yeah. stick. He doesn't actually end up hitting. And Invoker is sheeped, but he's just going to be able to walk away. Has Roger gone too far? Ooh, and they only use one buyback. All right. Nice play, but now Empire have 30 seconds to make a power play. This is spooky. Still a very tense moment for sure. Resolution hitting up front and center. He has his Manta style and BKB ready with the Rapier. They are so as they know they don't have buyback. If they die right now, they lose the game. So <laughs> they don't even get the trouble. It's, man, IT Vitality with a late game plays, man. They have been doing a great job. I, I mean, it is completely inconceivable that IGV have been able to hold on this yes. long. The the way that they've done it too, with you know keeping these Helm of the Donner Mega Creeps and just out team fighting them constantly. It's been incredibly pleasure to watch. Yeah, the late game tech is from IG Vitality. After Empire started sieging them with all these like Silver Edge and Blink Pop Lincoln's trying to instant kill people tactics, IG Vitality, they shifted their strategy too. They had a couple of Helmet Dominators that they use uh, to dominate the Mega Creeps and then put them outside of T4 so they oh. wouldn't have to blow glyphs as often. In July then, though. Oh, in July is He's catching Ghost Stick. This is a decent sized kill. He doesn't have buyback. They're going to blow him up. Ice Path is there. The disarm keeps him alive for the moment. And now FN, he's in this area as well. They lift him up one time. Sunstrike going to land as well as that disarm. But no, they just blow up the Invoker. He's going to have to buy back in just a second. But FN is also dead. And now they're controlling up this anti mage. If they could kill him off here, this would be so tremendous. But it doesn't look like it's going to happen. As you look at the damage. Sakata blows him up to hell. 100 seconds. No anti mage. And now looking for more. Can they kill? off Ghostic as well, it might finally have done it. IGV, after 128 minutes, GG is called, FN's had enough. Dog fights MVP, for sure. I don't yeah. know. Well, how about all 10 players for not losing their minds? <laughs> I can't believe it ends like that. That's insane. IGV held on for so long. That was one of the most brilliant Mega creep defenses I've seen, or actually just high ground defense. Really. Yeah, dog fights and super that tandem. <laughs> the saves, no missed clicks. Some of them were a tad bit late, but they also like shifted their heroes without buyback to be out in front and most vulnerable. But at the at the end of the day, IG Vitality. I don't even remember who won the first game. Empire, <laughs> I guess. Empire won the first game, which means that IGV go up one or ostensibly two games ahead of them in the standings, which means they have a very good opportunity to try and knock out TNC from the upper bracket. If Empire would have won this, they would have had a great opportunity to go for it, but it's going to be a lot harder. They're going to have to win out the rest of their matches and hope for some upsets across the rest of the bath, uh, rest of the groups. GG! GG, we're going to be back in just a little while with our second series because we've only got to cast two games so far. It's going to be Cloud9 versus Execration. Lyrical and Merlini are two casters with this one. See you all in a bit.